Who would like to give us the recap of last session? Not me. <laughs> yeah, I guess I can do it. Yay! I mean, it's literally went to Magic Tower did it abuse. Yeah, that's we true. went we went to a Magic Tower, and we had a lively game of riddles against a sentient. Door. Now, the reason why we came to said magical tower was to talk with an interview several candidates for the positions of the magical college, namely guard captain, necromancer, and headmaster. Mm -hmm. Sounds so, great to me, anyway. So, holding a bunch of uh, interviews with various candidates for guard captain, we decided on. Hold on. <laughs> I was about to say, I hope you guys took notes because you guys were deciding. I mean, I have them, but I'd have to dig through them. Oh, I was just looking at the wrong part of my note. <laughs> the Justin Owl. Yeah, Sturk Furbin, an owl man hmm. with a druidic background, and I'm totally not biased with this, with this choice. <laughs> with the Necromancer, we had decided to hold another similar contest in which they would create various undead beings and have them compete and what we chose was the fae yeah. a rocky a it's bag. fairy a rocky ten, tenithra mm -hmm. so we're done with the interview for, for the necromancer and for the guard captain now all <laughs> we have to do is select the headman And I'm pulling up that list for y'all right now, actually. If you can give me a minute to transfer it over. And oh, I should probably actually put that in character door. so it's easier to see. <clears throat> Wait, door? Door. Is the door to the tower interviewing <coughs> for the position? You do not know. That is the Oh, boy. Oh. Okay. In all fairness, if he was, he is pretty qualified. That's true. But that's a lot of power to give to one not a person. He already controls who can come in and out. I would say maybe for the uh, position of admissions office, I would say a door would be a pretty good <laughs> metaphor for one. But headmaster? A little bit concerned about this. Door master. All right. Um, and then, I'm guessing uh, just we're like all the other times, you're uh, handed the list by the uh, the secretary, basically the uh, the skeletal secretary. And he says, um, "Here's the list for all the candidates uh, that passed the vetting process." I didn't know they were pre-vetted. Okay, cool. Uh, ev every candidate uh, for every position is pre-vetted. Oh, this seems to make Ami feel better. She takes the list and. Thanks. The mm, skeleton. And I'm guessing we are in the room. She casts Go Sound and reads out the first name, which is Arg Le Fondant. Fondant? Le Fondant. I'm suddenly hungry. Uh, in walks a. Um... That's wrong, by the Cake way. Cake topping. If that's French, sorry. It is not French. Oh, good. It is a fantasy language. Okay, carry on. <laughs> Sorry. 
<laughs> French does so, not oh, exist. Did, yes. Does not exist in Pathfinder. Darby's name is French. Anyways, carry on. <laughs> Which is why we call him Darby and not Darvois. <laughs> <laughs> um, wait, he didn't mark here or not coming. Oh, awkward. One second. I'm, gonna, I'm okay. just going to ping him real quick. And I just realized that because my count was off. <clears throat> uh, but we'll carry on. What was I saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, Arg la Fondant. I'm just going to say it. Actually, I'm going to say it badly on purpose now that I know it bothers you. Arg la Fondant. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> the male half orc. Um, <laughs> <laughs> impeccably dressed. It looks like this man didn't hire a tailor. He bought out the tailor's house and made him move and live in with him. Because this guy, you probably couldn't find a speck of dust within a five foot radius of him. He walks in. He, long, flowing purple and orange robes, which. Um, you guys would know means that he is uh, well versed in the schools of illusion and uh, evocation. Uh, purple being the symbol for illusion, and orange slash red being the symbol for evocation. Uh, at least if you're like strict in the magical societies to wearing robes to what you're good at. Uh, long flowing purple and orange robes, a very nice cap that seems to be made of some type of large bird's feathers maybe an ostrich but it's also like purple and green and blue like no ostrich any of y'all have ever seen or any bird you've really ever seen and he walks in and uh, he's walking in uh, he has this uh, looks to be ivory cane with him walking in and then perched on his left shoulder is a small little greenish brown ugly looking creature that most of you would know as an imp and he walks in and uh, he he looks at all of you gives a very deep bow and then he says hello my name is ark how may i assist you today He was just staring at the sheer amount of bling this guy has. Uh. Two wonders what makes you qualified for the position. Hmm. I am a great master of illusion and evocation magics and have dabbled in all the others. I, uh, have many years under my belt of learning and teaching magic and administering several smaller schools in places like Numeria and Mendev. Would you care for a demonstration? Mm. Sure. Uh, might I ask one of you to volunteer? No harm will come of, to any of you. Two believes Grimet should step up to the plate. He stands there and kind of looks around, Our, not knowing who that is. <laughs> uh, Grimly lit up, but didn't say anything. Are you having issues there, bud? No, no, we're good. Okay, because I just volunteered you. Uh, sure. Tommy made hands and kind of pushes your back a little. Evocation, you say? Uh, <laughs> and, and illusion, of course. Huh. Uh, might I ask which you would prefer a uh, demonstration of? The larger the explosion, the better, I think. I see. Oh, God. I see. Now, um, are you... Um, Resistant to fire. Uh, Can you cast energy resist fire on Grimly? I guess I am now. Good. Uh, could you stand over there for a moment? Sure. Thank you. And then uh, 
I need you to roll a reflex save. As he starts chanting, he draws an elaborate circle in the air and then starts making these weird symbols that actually stay in the in the air and it, they're it's like fingers of fire wherever his finger goes but they just stay there and anyone that uh know or is trained in spellcraft can make a spellcraft check to figure out what kind of magic he's can using Yumni cast something on himself as well the uh, yeah uh i'm gonna drop a resilience spear around myself when i just say basically when, like the time the third or fourth symbol appears the argument is like eyes like wider and he's like <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> he just he just like starts drop basically drops a resilience spear around himself okay so trayron way and sarah or ami uh sarah why is your name first like literally everyone's his character and then discord name but yours is discord then character this was the form that i was instructed <laughs> it's well, also the one you have yeah, that's because I'm the DM. And most people here know me as Karina rather than Mike. So bad. Um, oh, well. Altrin's is that no, like fine. that too. Uh, Ami. Um, okay. Ami, Wei, and Trayron. Um, Grimly, do you not have Spellcraft? I Why do have not being included. Go ahead and roll it. Yeah, you should be included since you're the target of the No, spell. no. Look. What? Look. Yeah, what? I know. Why? Because oh. there are information levels. Oh, see. So Sarah or Ami, Wei, and Trayron, uh, and potentially Grimly. Okay, not Grimly. Um, well, you guys get this because it's a lower tier too. You all realize that he is casting Runic Magic, which is a type of magic that basically makes words into power. Um, similar. Uh, in the magic sense as the divine magic power words are but basically you make written words into magic um, those of you that rolled 30 or higher so two and grimly recognize that he's about to uh, cast empowered comet on grimly resilience be a resilient fucking and the range oh, of this empowered comet is the, you mean the radius? Yes. Uh, not enough that it would hit you. This, okay. This, this is a fairly big room. Uh, and Grim, Grimly, there's Grimly standing at the uh, the far end, so like a hundred feet away from you guys, in the center of the room. Well, I see nothing wrong with this. <laughs> but uh, Grimly, go ahead and roll me a reflex save as this giant molten comet just comes out of nowhere basically right in front like right above you and just slams does i'm um, sorry does the um does the resilience spear get into place uh yes you still need to roll a reflex gotcha mostly because the resilience spear is just completely shattered as soon as it's hit by this comet <clears throat> Um, Grimly uh, falls prone as this giant comet smashes around him, catching him on fire and everything, and everything suddenly just disappears. And Grimly realizes he basically just tripped and fell over his own feet because he was scared. Oh, an illusion! Ooh. However, you do realize... Um, actually... Roll another spellcraft to see if you realize this. <clears throat> you guys are rolling pretty high in spellcraft today. Do you see our modifiers? Yes. <laughs> also, I know that once y'all hit level 9, all the modifier difficulties go up too. Haha. <laughs> So this is your last level of easy rolls. Um, Trayron, unfortunately, doesn't. But everyone else realizes that the illusion broke his resilience sphere and Grimly is no longer enchant uh, enchanted by resist fire. Huh. So the, the illusion was powerful enough to disenchant things as well. <clears throat> and uh, the... Uh, 
Arg basically turns around, gives a another bow to both of you, or both Grimly and the rest of you, and says, "Now, would you actually like me to demonstrate uh, evocation as well?" Two thinks this was sufficient. Um, two wonders if you have any school you're particularly weak in. I am uh, not a great necromancer, as uh, the sight of skulls sends my spine tingling. Hmm. Well, Grimly is impressed, though he's more, he's more just um, stunned right now. Well, is anyone but two going to ask questions? <laughs> All you face character. I'm just kidding. I, I, I'm digging a bit. Hang on. But also Ami is Ami. Um, do you master. plan on teaching any of this to the rest of the school? <coughs> um, I oh, am no. applying to be a headmaster, yes. Because that was awesome. I roll my eyes. All three of them? Shh. <laughs> uh, Arg looks around uh, expectantly, wondering if there's anything else y'all need. Mm. Two wonders, do you know any necromancy spells? Of course. A necessity uh, that I, I don't like, but uh, I, I can cast up to third, third uh, tiered uh, necromantic magics as well. Why illusion magic? Why not just evocation magic? <clears throat> like most wizards, I know specialize in one school. I think because I enjoy illusions. I am able to cast 8th tier illusion magic and it comes quite handy. Would you like another demonstration of the non-destructive aspects illusion magic can have? Sure. <laughs> uh, Grimly, roll <laughs> a fortitude save, please. Alright. <clears throat> Rocks fall, Grimly dies. <laughs> uh, Grimly, you are blind, deaf, mute, and no longer can feel your limbs. Ah. Uh, so he drops. Yes. He falls prone. To everyone watching Grimly, he basically just starts drooling out one of the side of his mouth, his eyes glaze over, and he just falls to the ground. Two thinks that's rather useful. Can I? Can two have a scroll of that? <laughs> I'm afraid the uh, regents to create such a scroll would be quite expensive. But um, <laughs> should I be hired, I would be happy to provide you with one. How long does this last, by the way? <laughs> uh, you don't know. Alright. Uh, <laughs> uh, two believes... Uh, this individual is at least somewhat useful, um, and they are an interviewer. Are you capable of removing it? He snaps his finger and then grimly uh, has all his senses back. Uh, <coughs> blink, shake, shake my head hit, hit a little bit and like, huh, that was interesting. Out of character, does anyone want like a list of potential questions from me? Because I'm fine providing such a list. I just don't think Ami would ask them. Go for it. Ami, this, the mute head of state. Give me that. Thank, thank you for that. It was interesting and just sort of taught us back to the, to the table. You're welcome. He bows and then walks out. Oh, okay. Oh. I, I, I didn't think I was the, he would think that's me dismissing him. Whoops.
do you want do we do we can we still ask the questions or do you want to just move on? Hmm? Can can we because uh, Army just posted why do we want this want this position as something she would wanted to ask? I mean you can call I said I would post suggestions. Yeah, yeah, I, I was moving, but I, I, I didn't intend to dismiss him with that. Uh, but if he took those words as dismissal, then I think he, we he could. He did, and he's walking out. <laughs> yeah, I think we're done with this one. Does Ami want to say, speak up on any of these? Maybe, directly? Uh, what do you... I okay. If you want me to break character, I can ask these we questions can, and do the face. We could just leave like, it. We could just leave it. Actually. Yeah, I think we. I've got enough for him. Because Grim Grimly's kind of done as well, so it's like, yeah. Can we get next one in then? Ula Sibilians. You call the name out a couple of times, but no one actually shows up. All uh, right. Detect magic. <clears throat> Directed at the door. At the door? The door? Well, yeah, around the room, I guess. Yeah. It, I guess. At what level are you casting it? Um. Right, I have two separate caster levels right now. Uh, Isn't that fun? Fifth. fifth level. Um, the door isn't glowing, but there is a space roughly center of the room that is. <clears throat> hmm. Two things you should dismiss your spell, so we might see you. Nothing. Nothing. Well, then they probably don't care very much about the job. Uh, Ami Kesko sound. And the name Erdith Horneth rings out. I mean, the that... Grimmy's like, wait, is someone here? Already? Uh, door opens and in walks a uh, man dressed uh, kind of actually shoddily. His Kind of a grayish, faded patchwork cloak. Uh, he has a traveler's staff with him. Uh, rather large backpack on his back, and then kind of faded walking boots, uh, thin leather, um, and then some greenish-brown trousers that were probably either all green or all brown at some point, but they've been kind of faded just from years of rain and stuff like that. And then he walks in and says, ah, um, hello, sorry, I uh, just got here today. Uh, my name is uh, Erdith, um, uh, Erdith Horneth. How can I help you? Um, I'm here hmm. for the position of uh, headmaster. I'm a generalist wizard myself. Hmm. Have you prepared some sort of disenchantment spell? Uh, two wonders. Of course. Uh, Directed at the center of the room, please. Uh, of course. He waves his hand, does a small under his breath can incantation, and then the center of the room kind of shimmers, and then where there was nothing lies a completely charred and burnt and blackened corpse. Oh, dear. Um... Oh, hello. Um, that's interesting. Is, is this part of the interview? I no. Hmm. Oh. I think I know what just happened. Oh, okay. <laughs> I know what just happened. In character, uh, I probably don't. I don't. Two believes happened. someone has chosen to kill the competition and used uh, Grimetta as the opportunity. Hmm. <laughs> Gonna have to disqualify a previous oh, applicant. Oh, that's awkward. Um. Hmm. 
give me just a second here. Because I have a spell I honestly didn't think I'd ever get to use. Um, I'll write that. <laughs> Is it prepared? I, it's I'm a spontaneous caster. I was just double checking because you said you had two caster levels now, so I was just making sure it was from a spontaneous pool. Yep, it's it's an occult spell, so it has mm-hmm. to be. Um, I stride out to the center of the room, tap the corpse, and uh, I cast grave words, which basically makes the corpse start babbling and spitting out random sentence. And there's a ten percent chance that this information is some use to me. Okay, uh, roll the d10 then. Uh, we'll say it's not a use on a 10. No. 1d100. <laughs> oh. Well, uh-huh. you still fail, then. <laughs> it's okay. not alcohol. Uh, okay, it still uh, spits out random information. The corpse uh, gains Tourette's. It what? It, it just starts babbling for six, cent- or six okay. seconds. Okay, um, Ami casts Summon Monster 2 and some, or not 2, but 3, I guess, but she uses it to summon a level 2 monster, and it's a No Soy Psycho. Uh, you broke up at the end of No Soy what? Psycho Pomp. Oh, okay. that thing, the bud. And she has it cast Speak with Death. It stops babbling goes silent for a second and then it goes yes what happened to you i got burned alive how giant meteor smashed onto me right on top hmm. kind of hurt name ula sibilinus uh, our character can give me ask questions too? Yes, of course. Why wouldn't he be able to? Uh, <laughs> what were you doing in the center of the room? Spying. Hmm. Two things you got what you deserved. Possibly an accident. Oh, <clears throat> uh, Why were you spying? Oh, you first. Uh, how, how many questions to speak for dead answer? Six. Okay, we've but, done, we've but done. then also I can use it three times. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> Go ham, friends. <laughs> I was. Uh, what was the question, Trayron? Sorry. Yeah. Why were you spying on us? To get an advantage over the competition. Two things that failed spectacularly. <laughs> we should check if they have any way of resurrecting. You guys don't have any way of resurrecting, so... <laughs> I'm sure we can bring it to one of the necromancers. Uh, once you decide on one. We have. No, no, no. You should well, totally, totally pick the other one. Uh, the, the only one that truly passed. <laughs> ne- well, necromancers <laughs> don't help much with this. Um... Last question, I think, right? Oh, this is a second last For question. now. <laughs> Ask about what it, whether they have any like contingencies against being raised, I guess. Nope. Contingent. Two believes you should summon the person involved or er, running all the uh, selection army or syrup. That running probably. selection uh i we don't could even still know his interview name. the corpse just ami, saying guys yeah you can keep going uh the no soy ami directs the no soy to um continue casting speak with dead and she goes to get the selection guy in i just gotta remember what i called him yeah i don't remember what you <laughs> called i him. don't either and i forgot to write his name down because it was just a non-essential side <laughs> character uh, give me a couple minutes. Maybe I can find it by scrolling. Nah, I'll just make one up, I guess. His name right. shall be... Uh, not that name. Uh, what were you... I, I'm, I'm doing it random name generator, but it came up with another French thing, so I'm not going to try to kill Ami's so... uh, ears again. <laughs> Le uh, <Yeah. laughs> Napoleon. <laughs> uh, no, <laughs> his name is uh, Timon. We'll call him. Okay. So, 
so what will you do now that now that you are dead? I don't know. <laughs> and the corpse falls silent as that was the sixth question. And also I cast does anybody want actually want to ask more questions? Uh Gumi's like not really. Yes. I mean, we could just hold the interview before resurrecting yep. her. That's so, exactly could, what I want to do. Ask it again. Hmm. Oh, no, no, oh. no. I want to know why she wants this position as I casually dismiss the other applicant. Uh, yeah. Uh, there it is. Good Wait, I cast we will be with you with again, again shortly. I guess. Uh, of course. I'll be right back. I guess. I'll just stand in the hallway. <laughs> and, do uh, apologize. And Erdis kind of just like to. shuffles off. <laughs> All right. Um, two wonders why you would want this position. I ask, standing beside the charred corpse. <laughs> Research grants. They're amazing. Hmm. Oh, shit. Is this forcing honesty out of them? Yes. <laughs> yeah, speak with it. Speak with it. No, we are not killing all of the applicants. Robot. You can summon more psycho pops. I'm aware. <laughs> I think We're the cost of resurrecting all of them would like, kind of break the bank, and not to mention cause a lot of distrust in our administration. Two wonders how you plan to meet the expectations of this position. I can cast seventh level or seventh tier magic of every school except for evocation, in which case I can still cast sixth tier evocation magic. Two wonders if you have any particular strength in schools. <laughs> you guys are going to laugh at this one. Um, <clears throat> I can cast ninth tier divination magic. Of course you can. Two thanks. You did not see that one coming. <laughs> oh, come on. Really? You had to say that? <laughs> Um, two wonders what sort of training you would receive. Self-taught. I'm a sorcerer. Oh. Huh. What other question? What do you think of the other applicants so far? <laughs> uh, I haven't met any of them, except for uh, the orc. Or half-orc. I didn't like him much. Okay, well, that's the last question for that cast, so cast again. Okay. Uh, <laughs> what do we got to ask this time? I mean, we have all these questions, why not use them? It's being forced. Grimmy thinks that if she's being forced to tell the truth, we should take this opportunity to extract blackmail material. Oh, God. Okay. You're going to blackmail a corpse? Wait, 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 it's wait, already wait, looking right. pretty blackened already. <laughs> it and it's definitely not useful. male. Like, she's she's a 7th level caster. She probably has some useful she, things. She's a ninth level caster. Why is she standing in the middle of the room uh, to spy? You went, hey, you're full, not here. She's spying. We asked that already. You, you went full robot, Ami. I didn't hear you. Was that just yeah, me or I'm was that sorry, everyone? Sorry, my internet is still being stupid. Uh, we asked that already. She was spying on the other. other... Yeah, no. Why was she standing? Well, this is out of character. Why was she standing in the middle of the room to spy? <laughs> there, it's a big room. Anyways, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, echoing now. Carry on. Yeah, it's because I'm speaking louder. Go. Two wonders what sort of research you would have been doing. All kinds. Uh, Especially, I'm working on what's called uh, the Raven's Chronometer. Is this a, can you, is like a what does that do? 
we can make to find out without asking questions. It manipulates time. I think. I'd need research to fully understand it. Hmm. Two things that wouldn't have been much use to you right now. Um... All right. Two doesn't think this person would have cut it as a candidate. I glance at the others. Thoughts? And also a psychopunk just sort of dissipates and then. Do I come back with the selection person yet? Oh, yeah. I didn't realize you'd left the room. Yeah, yeah. I had yeah. left to get him. Oh, then yeah, you come back with uh, Tim and following you going... Uh... Scratching with bony fingers, scratching his bony head. You know what? I think I'm just gonna take the charred corpse out of the room for a moment. You know, so it's gonna do. I was gonna offer to do that. Tommy points at the corpse and looks at Timon. Timon, not Timon. Sorry. With his sidekick Pumbaa. (laughs) (laughs) Um. Uh, Timon uh, looks at it and goes, "Um, did you have to burn one of them?" Tommy mm. shakes her head no. Uh, two believes there is murdering of the competition. Well, yeah, that happens. They're wizards. Wizards are fucking crazy. Ami looks somewhat hurt. <laughs> also, Ami is not a wizard. <laughs> well, not everyone would know that at first glance. She's <laughs> sure. definitely a wizard. Gumi's <clears throat> like, huh. <clears throat> Are you capable of bringing this unfortunate fellow back? The, me? I can't cast magic. I'm the secretary. Getting it done. Uh, possibly. We'd have to use some of the kingdom's resources. Hmm. Two thinks that's not worth it. Alright, I'll just throw it in the dead pit. No, no, no. She could probably be more used. Do you have, like, a more secure place we can intern her corpse? Mm. Uh, secure? In what way? We have the research labs. <coughs> you know, somewhere where nobody else is going to touch it before we have a chance to get a resurrect. Two doesn't want them brought Oh, back. come on. Can I just get a box with a lock and chain on it? Then? Uh, yeah. I, I, I can get you a coffin. All right, all right. Let's finish up the interviews and then I'll get that settled. Uh, okay? I'll take care of it. Sure, thank you. With my hand. <laughs> Sorry, that tone of voice is just. You see, Tim and uh, take out a a long uh, rod, kind of silverish green, points it at the corpse, and the corpse just starts levitating and following him as he walks out the door. Two oh, two wonders if you could ask Erdith to step back in on your way out. Uh, sure. And then uh, as he leaves. Edith walks back and he goes, "Well, that was uh, quite interesting. Uh, don't see that every day. Uh, can I? Can I? Uh, how can I help you? I'm Edith. No, I already said that. Uh, you know who I am. Good, 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 like smile, going. Consequences of spying. Ah, I see. Uh, spying on what? Interviews. What's this? Why would Apparently. you spy on interviews? Does this make any sense? Two oh, wonders the exact same thing. Life. Considering they could have just scried. Hmm. Um, yes, of course. Nevertheless, they were found unfit. Well, hard, hard to be fit as a corpse, I, I imagine. Two had the interview go on anyway. <coughs> we would have brought them back if they would have met the requirements. I, I, I see. I'll try so, not to die. First, two wonders why you would want this position. Uh, this position? You, of headmaster, right? Yes, not the corpse. Uh, I was just making sure. I uh, quite like uh, magic. Uh, it's been my life for a while. <laughs> a couple hundred years at least. And I figured after my times of wandering, I might settle down and teach some of what I've learned to uh, prospective students. Hmm. Two does think you look well-traveled. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, I've had these pants for 300 years. Gumi so, looks suddenly interested. I I am quite poor, uh, so I apologize for my appearance. But I am I'm very knowledgeable. So, so 
too like wonders it. how you plan to meet the expectations uh, uh, of required for this uh, position. Well, I think I'm pretty good at teaching. I've taught people and things along my travels throughout the the continent, uh, and I know quite a bit of magic. Those were the only uh, prerequisites to apply. <clears throat> I could it, show you something if you had something in mind. I'm, I'm a generalist. Calls, so. Ah, I too was about to ask that. Yeah, yeah. he said, uh, out of character, he said, his, the first thing he said was he was a generalist wizard. Uh, is there something you would like me to show you? What would you be able to show? I can cast uh, six-tier magic of uh, any school, and uh, a few schools I can cast up to seventh. So anything you like, really. Hmm. I'm, I'm not a fan of divination magic, but I can cast it. It's a rather um, intrusive Show us some of your most powerful spells. In powerful in which respect? Mm. I'm not trying to dance around. I, I apologize, but I don't... Do you, do you mean combat effectiveness? What would be good in gaining influence? Things like that. Mm. What is the spell you're most proud of? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, you see, I have... Uh, recently learned the ability or the spell uh, of mass resurrection. How however, um, <clears throat> I managed to make it castable at a lower tier for quick quickness on the battlefields, uh, although there were some minor complications. Such as? Uh, well, you see... You can cast Mass Resurrection at third tier magic level. Which is it honestly insane. That's even higher than just regular Resurrection. But uh, the personalities don't always go to the right body. Mm. But for combat effectiveness in war, it's quite useful... And then you can sort all that out after the battle's over. Two wonders how you would sort that out. Uh, well, you kill them and cast resurrection like normal. Hmm. So your thing is developing new spells, then? Yes, I'm. A, I'm. I'm a researcher. I. I it's fascinating. I could I could try one or two ideas I have here, but uh, I have not tested them thoroughly. Maybe or I can show you something more traditional. Uh, two believes you should uh, use your highest power mind affecting on, and I gesture to Grimly again. Uh, uh, I, I I look at him and it's like, why don't you take a turn this time? Uh, Grimly, make a uh, will save, please. <clears throat> Twenty-three. Twenty-three. Oh, why? Why you? Because unfortunately, I have an absurdly high will save. <laughs> Just making sure. Oh, that's Are you seeing that in character? Easy. What? No. I'm not saying that in character, obviously. One sec. I'm pulling up his spell list. If okay. someone's pegging me with a mind-affecting spell, I'm rolling at a plus 13. <laughs> so... Um, okay, so here's a, here's a question. Grimly. Has Grimly the character ever 
been in love? Oh no. Uh, depends on. Oh, like love? Uh, no. Okay. Uh, who would be the people Grimly respects most? Currently? Yes. Point at army. Okay. Uh, well, no, this was an out of character question. <laughs> oh, uh, sorry. <laughs> um, you, um, Ami has spurned your love, and the thing you want most in life right now is to kill her. As you're Oof. affected by the spell Lover's Vengeance. Mm, oh, okay. boy. <clears throat> Your Although single this... goal in life right now is to kill Ami. Okay, that's quite sudden. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. He rolled a 34, so... Yep. Uh, it was 7th level, level magic, so... Well... Hmm. <laughs> Does Ami seem to notice... Anything. Yeah, do, do does anyone else get spellcraft to know this? It highly depends on what your action is that you're about to take. And then I I'm going to you. cast Battering Blast on Avi. Okay. Uh Gremly basically is standing there, uh, and then she suddenly stands up, turns around, points one of her fingers at at Ami, and then starts casting a spell. I genuinely about believe halfway that through that his Ami. spell. Um, uh, about halfway through through the spell, uh, Erdith, uh basically uh, <clears throat> gives a little cough, and then he just uh, grimly stumbles on the words a bit, and it just finds herself standing there pointing at Ami. Ami raises an eyebrow and looks towards what's his face. Am I still under the effect of the spell? No, it, he <laughs> canceled the spell. Good show. What's his name? What's his name? Grimly turns oh. around Air, and Air just... Is Air it, it's in character code. You don't have to scroll. Glares at two for a moment. Uh, and one last question from two. How how would you run the school? Um, well, the way I like to think of a university setting is that it's full of people that want to learn. Uh, anyone that wants to learn can go to any class they want to, whenever they want to, and get practical experience. If they uh, are here just to goof off and stuff like that, well, uh, then they learn evocation magic firsthand. Hmm. Well, that's all from two. <clears throat> and I'll just give a glance at the rest of our group. Oh. Two things Ami happen. asks, no. what did you oh. just do? I cast Lover's Vengeance on the fine little lady. Ami looks repulsed. <laughs> <laughs> and she says, it's never do that again. Not what you think it is. <laughs> we are now in a Yuri action anime. Ami just completely ignores you. <laughs> but she tells Aerith. Never do that again. Of course. As Her Majesty wishes. She blinks in shock before remembering that's her. <laughs> and tries to cover it up with a, a dignified nod. <laughs> he bows and uh, says, uh, will that be all? Two things, that's all. Uh, Wei, please roll a D1000. Oh no. Oh boy. Six twenty two. Uh, wait, you've made a bubblegum pink potion that smells of roses. Oh, okay. I like it. You have no idea what the possible effects could be. Um, Ami casts Ghost Sound and Ghost Sound to call out Operth Pillwick. Operth Pillwicken! Get it right! 
uh, as in walks a... Pennelwicken? She squints at the name written down. Pennelwicken! As a, a short, uh, almost two-foot-tall yeah. gnome with bright orange pigtails and a goatee walks in. Oh. And uh, he is wearing a um, what could be uh, generously called a banana hammock with tassels. Two would like to know why you were dressed in such a manner. Hmm. Ah, more freedom of root, of movement for combat spells. Uh, the guy back there warned me that they killed the last one, so I should be prepared. <laughs> <laughs> I write in my notebook, possible pervert. <laughs> um, <coughs> we did not kill one. Uh, two believes there's a little bit of murdering the competition going ah, on. Ah, well, in that case, I should still be prepared. Don't you think? You're I don't want to get on, murdered. You're not planning on murdering anyone yourself, are you? Uh, not unless they try to murder me first. Mm. I quite dislike being murdered. It's only happened twice, but I don't want to repeat the process. Uh, okay, can you explain the uh, first time you were murdered, then? Well, the first time I was murdered, I was stabbed in the back when I was 12. Fortunately, my father is quite a good uh, businessman, and I was resurrected. And the second time? Uh, similar circumstances later in life. Do you wonder what the cause of the stabbings was? Uh, a knife. Mm, the events that led up to it. Oh, well, people dislike it when someone who obviously deserves power but doesn't fit their normal social the normities um, gains such power. And he crosses his arms and kind of just stands there smugly. <coughs> All right. Two wonders how you plan to meet the expectations that would be put on you in this position. Well, teach magic, of course. Unless there was something else that I signed up for, other than teaching magic. The brochure did just say magic. I, I suppose I could teach someone hand-to-hand -hand combat if I really tried. I shake my head. Two, what? two wonders what your strengths are. Oh! Uh, In magic. Uh, oh. Um, just magic, then? For now, yes. Uh, okay. Um, well, I can cast fourth tier magic of every level, and I can cast uh, ninth tier of enchantment and conjuration. Uh, do you believe you aren't conjuring an enchanting appearance at the moment, but we'll move on. Any particular school you are weak in? Uh, uh, other than being fourth tier and everything else, no. Two wonders why you're so focused in these two schools. They're the most effective to getting what you want and deserve. Besides, I'm barely two feet tall. He unconsciously kind of stands on his tippy toes. But, uh, so I can't uh, always fight my own fights, but I know enough magic to summon anything that can. They're very versatile. You can summon whatever you want. Calvin really just nods in agreement behind two. Ah, this one knows. Uh, 
Tommy looks down at a list in her hands. She seems to have been writing down the questions that have been asked. And she asks somewhat robotically, why do you want this position? Because I think I deserve it. He responds in the same mannerism. Uh, she seems confused. He seems confused that you're confused. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like a demonstration? Ami waves her hand in dismissal. All right, then. And she waves. Fine. And he kind of walks out. <laughs> and she casts Skull Sound again. I'm just waiting for you to say, Arg, you got some strong competition walking out. <laughs> right? <laughs> Uh, she casts Ghost Sound and calls in Hadwissa Schwar. <laughs> I love you pronouncing these names after giving me shit for mispronouncing I'm one that looks trying. slightly French. <laughs> I'm sorry, how is it? Hadwissa, Hadwissa Schwara. Then I was not wrong. Why are you making fun of Because it's funny. <laughs> uh, but yes, in walks a uh, tall, lanky, uh, woman and uh her skin is probably the blackest you've ever seen it's almost ebony uh and then she has one long braid going down almost to her feet you think except that it's wrapped around her uh waist almost like a belt and then she's wearing these long silken robes of um <clears throat> bluish green which you would know as the symbol or the colored robes of abjuration and she's wearing a uh, clear crystal tiara on her forehead so this is an out of character question right mm -hmm. but what you're saying is you could carry her like a suitcase <laughs> yes oh my. you could <laughs> <laughs> uh. it would be probably rather painful for her but yes uh have duration they protect themselves from that shit it's fine <laughs> um two wonders what your interest in this position is um you guys all hear in your mind uh because she, her lips do not move uh i apologize but uh i am unfortunately mute um might i answer your questions this way mm, two please this will suffice Sure. And uh, this was non-invasive, uh, so if anyone did want to block this out, they could. Basically, think Wait, of... Way blocks it out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> then Way is just literally watching her stand there doing nothing. <laughs> um, for everyone else... Oh, he's playing with his alchemy kit. True. Uh, <laughs> for everyone else, um, she, uh, she looks around and uh, says, um, I'm applying for this position because I believe that magic is one of the few unknowns left in our world, and that with greater mastery over it, all the races might be able to come together at peace at last and be something greater than what we are now. Well, she already sounds like a headmaster. Sorry. Uh, <clears throat> two wonders how far you think that ideology will get in this country. In this country, the country where humans and orcs and the undead live side by side, I think it would get quite far. <coughs> <laughs> Two didn't think that question through. <laughs> no. <laughs> Two wonders how you plan to meet what will be required of you in this position. Well, I am a quite able caster myself, and uh, I have three uh, grown children, so I am very well at uh, adapting with, uh, let us say, simpler minds that need education. Uh, 
any particular school you are strong in? I can cast a ninth tier abjuration magic. Weaknesses? I am a specialist in abjuration and therefore sacrificed the spells or the schools of necromancy and delusion. Hmm. Which, uh, Ant would probably know whether or not he likes it is something different, but Ant would probably know that for most, like, specialists are not a uncommon thing. Like, that's pretty common for wizards to sacrifice two sp- uh, schools to yep. hyper-focus on one. And by sacrifice, it means they can still cast those spells if they have the spell level. It just takes double the slots. I'm just waiting for some crazy person to make a Sin Mage character. <laughs> mm. Tommy looks down at her list and asks, Who taught you? Uh, That would be the matriarch of my country, which is uh, currently the Wounded Lands now. However, I was in an enclave near the lake of Epona. And that's Epona, not uh, with an I, not Epona as in Zelda's horse. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was going to... <laughs> um, Lake Epona, and um, I believe I am the last of uh, of my village, but uh, that is where I was taught and educated. And your family? Other than so my three children, they are all dead. Tragic. Ah. Uh, if she looks, oh, go on. If you don't mind to asking, what are the circumstances of it? Demons, as hmm. you can probably imagine. However, uh, Lord Yathlazar was kind enough to offer uh, the few refugees that remained refuge within his dome. Ami looks down at her sheet of paper and asks, how do you believe the school should be? Well, uh, it should be staffed by competent teachers, uh, stick to a relatively strict schedule, and uh, any troublemakers should be kicked out. Um, more than general's, uh, g- general sense, I haven't formulated a complete strategy, as I do not know who, yet who I would be working with. From what two is seeing, it's a colorful cast. As are uh, most people in life, I look forward to the challenge. Hmm. Can we get a demonstration of some of your magic? Of course. Which uh, school would you like demonstrated? Well, if since you say Abjuration is your strongest suit, uh, something from the Abjuration School would be good. Uh, of course. Um, Ami also mutters up something clever. Something clever. Uh, now, if you would give me a moment to think, then, while the DM <laughs> looks up ninth level Abjuration <laughs> spells. <laughs> Disjunction, for example. Yeah. Well, because I was thinking it's... I mean, it's like all of them can cast powerful stuff, but like, how are they? How do they? How do they use it? Is also like. But Grimly has a suggestion. What is Grimly's Uh-oh. suggestion? Uh, this may backfire horribly. I'm gonna take out the skull. Okay. Are you able to dispel this? Ooh. I hear the desperation sneaking in. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, might I ask what it is? Uh, Green Hazel hesitates, then, like, a monkey's paw? Jazz <laughs> hands. Her, her, <laughs> her eyes kind of widen. Um, I could attempt, however, from my learning, uh, such is not head. possible. And, uh, uh, Ami is and should, head should my. Risk. Should my attempt fail, it would provide quite a lot of pain 
to nods. the owner of said uh, device. I mean, I mean, sort of like she literally reaches out and touches Grimly, just sort of like pushing his hand, holding the monkey paw away, and ushering him back into his seat. Yeah, Grimly's like, uh, oh, all right, then, and then like sort of keeps it, and then something else. Then, sorry. Uh, were, were there any specifics you would like to see uh, other than dispelling a uh, ancient magical artifact? Something clever, I suppose, like the highness, like her highness requested. Tommy glares at you. Um, I see. Um, well, in that case. Should I uh hmm. I'll let it think on it. She uh <clears throat> she looks at uh Grimly and says, um Are you do you know teleportation magic? Unfortunately, no. I ah, there is one of the things I look I'm looking to pick up soon. Oh wait, no, I do. I do know uh, basic teleportation. Ah, okay. Uh, well, in that case, she points at you and says, uh, "For the next nine days, you do not." As dimensional anchor has been cast on Grimly at ninth level. Huh. Meaning that he and others cannot forcibly or willingly teleport or face shift him anywhere. I'm not sure whether to look at this person with appreciation or be disappointed. <laughs> now, unfortunately, um, for abjuration, it's rather hard to demonstrate unless there's a powerful wizard trying to hurt you. Mm. Um we out of those. Uh, which is why I opted for preventing him from being able to teleport. So if you would kindly try. Sure. Grimly, Grimly will try to cast Dimension Door. Uh, Grimly casts Dimension Door, but when he goes to the opening, because basically Dimension Door summons a, like a, a hole really quickly to walk through and you pierce someone else. Basically, he w tries to walk into the hole, bounces back, and is thrown against the wall. Nine days, you said. Uh, I could dispel it, of course, but yes. How much does Grimly know about Dimension Anchor? Uh, why don't you roll a spellcraft? How sure. much does Grimly know about Dimensional Anchor? 29. <clears throat> 29, sorry. You should take a brief moment in this room to prepare yourself. Uh, Arg doesn't seem to like competition. Ah, I see. Um, well, in that case, I believe I can protect myself quite well. And uh, mm. she summons this iridescent, glowing orb of light all around her. And then uh, she bows and says, is there anything else? And anyone who wants to can roll a spellcraft to see what it is. Uh, Grimly specifically, Dimensional Anchor, um, you know that nothing magical can forcibly oh, move you yeah. at all. Right, I was more interested in like the duration thing, because from what it, I remember, does not last nine days. That's like ridiculously it long. It does for... not last nine days normally. Yeah, so some, she definitely customized it, which which would... Basically, if, if Grimly is aware of that, that would be impressive. Uh, two, she cast Prismatic, uh, prismatic Sphere around herself. Uh, actually, she cast Anchored Prismatic Sphere, which means that it'll follow her. Um, and then Wei and Ami would know this as well. 
unfortunately, um, Grimly was one point low. <laughs> no, that's fine. I mean, but uh, Prismatic I... Sphere uh, stops non-magical ranged weapons, like, completely. Um, and deals 20 points of uh, fire damage to anyone that tries to go through it. Stops magical ranged weapons, stops poison gases, petrification, breath weapons, divination and mental attacks, spells, and energy fields. It's basically oh. the ninth level magic of go fuck yourself, I'm immune to you. Yep. Wow. It's also the magic of I can't throw any shit back at you. Yeah, yeah, because it works both ways. Like, you can't <laughs> shoot things through it either. <laughs> well. But it does satisfied. mean that for a minimum of 90 minutes, unless you dispel it early, you're completely sheltered, basically, from the outside, unless some a crazy magic shit. Two is satisfied. Anything else? That will be all from me. Thank you. I mean, actually, she has a small smile towards the woman as they as they exit. Uh, she beams a radiant smile back. Then I mean, looks at the list of applicants. Two just says door. <laughs> So, uh, how's the yeah. door going to get in here? It doesn't. It is the tower. Does this um, mean we have to go a, outside? A face kind of formulates in the, in the middle of the ground and says, yes, indeed, I am the tower. How oh, crazy. One quite, and should I say, uniquely outfitted to be a headmaster. Of a wizard's college. Uh, okay. <clears throat> uh, why do you want this position? Well, um, a little backstory first, I suppose. 3,512 years ago. Oh god, make him stop. I was a man by the name of Albereth Thorn. Spittle. A rather ponderous name, as I was a half elf, but uh, 3,512 years ago, I was imprisoned in this tower on accident because my pupil uh, mistook a spell of uh, flesh to stone as stone to flesh. So, um, he turned me into a statue. Um, couldn't turn me back, um, and his only solution was to liquefy the stone and make a tower out of me. Um, rather yeah. unpleasant experience, but it does mean I've been here learning and sometimes teaching mages for many millennia. And who was this pupil of yours? I have long since forgotten his name. I barely of, even remember mine. Out of character, I have a feeling it's Gathlazar, but... <laughs> I was whatever. waiting for that to be said, to be honest. <laughs> okay, maybe later. Uh, what else? <laughs> out of character? I can't count that out, because I know the pupil's name, <laughs> but I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> hmm. But neither will I tell you yes or no, because then that will ruin the mystery. Uh, fine. Two wonders, does the name Yathlazar ring a bell? Hmm. I don't know anyone by the name of Yathlazar, no, I'm sorry. Hmm. Well then. Of course, I don't know many people's names. Not many people talk to me. Unless they need to get inside. Who would like to know if the riddles were necessary, or are you messing around? Let, let me ask. What If you were in a mobile tower, whose only inhabitants were stodgy old wizards or people that were antisocial by nature, present company excluded, of course, 
Uh, no offense meant. Uh, he, he, the face looks at Ami. <laughs> um, you might want some conversation for some reason, and riddles are a nice way to keep my mind flexible. Hmm. Two wonders why you've not reached out to have anyone fix your unique situation. Well, I don't have arms. Sorry, that was that was a joke. Um, <gasps> but the main reason is, um, if I just appeared in front of a, a wizard uh, or any intellectual and started talking to them, what do you think their first response would be? Who doesn't know? Uh, most of the few times that I've done it in the past several thousand years is an intense and irrevocable, horrible, horrible thing called they want to study me. Ah. I don't quite like being studied. And so... Two wonders n- how hmm. you would deal with that being a social headmaster. Ah, see... Once I'm in a position of power, anyone that wants to oh, study God. with oh, me. Fuck. Uh, what was that? What was what? Did you not hear uh, that? Your mic just did like a, a screech. Oh, did it? It sounded like someone screaming because they were dying. Oh my God. Uh, no, I didn't hear anything. I didn't hear it was off in that split second. Same time. <laughs> um, sorry? <laughs> I didn't hear anything. Well, try not you to. will when you're playing this back. Uh, no, Carry cause it, on. Because it only captures my my audio oh, and my weird. mic. Well, I suppose it does capture my mic, so maybe I will, but it depends on whether this picked it up. <clears throat> that anyway, was horrifying. I apologize for that. But what he was saying was... Um, what was he saying? Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> as a, someone in a position of power, I anyone that wanted to study with... Uh, study me would have to get permission first, which would mean I would have to like them. Hmm. Two wonders, are you still capable of casting spells? Uh, of course. How I many looks at him, thinks of what was it called? Somatic components? He seems puzzled. When, when the, um, when the room uh, that is designated to hold uh, components happens to be inside your body, it's quite easy to cast spells. Hmm. She shrugs and nods. It is, of... of course, always uh, the reason that people tend to find things missing from now and then, however. Mm-hmm. Out of curiosity, how do you go by doing somatic components? Um, I have that's you movement, not material. Yeah, that's movement, not material. Oh, whatever. Um, I the gargoyles at the top of the tower are perfectly fine for movement. <laughs> mm. Do you understand how you would run this school? Well. I would run it by teaching everything and everyone, and I could do it simultaneously, as over the years I have been able to manifest myself multiple times. Right now I am currently talking to some idiot trying to get in the front door, but doesn't know his riddles. It's odd that an orc would be this far north, though. Oh, no. He keeps yelling and yammering about where his pig is. Well, for fuck's sake. (laughs) Jesus Christ. I'm so glad I didn't hire him anyways. (laughs) Well then, two wonders if you would hold any particular grudge if you weren't chosen. Of course not. 
I've been through hundreds of headmasters. I'll have my shot again. <laughs> Is there any way to tell if he's like lying? Uh, you could try to sense motive a solid stone face. <laughs> yeah, I think I did. You could try. <laughs> I'm throwing one down. I'm gonna do it. <laughs> I actually have ranks in this motive from this from this hit band I picked up. Don't you dare roll an OOC. <laughs> <laughs> you changed channels. <laughs> Knew it. I've been rolling in bot since the game started to now. I'm not sure what your your point. Is. You know, you really can't tell what the solid stone face in the floors thinking <clears throat> eh, I'll believe him he's been through plenty so far two wonders do you apply every time yes hmm. do you like to know what happened to the last headmaster <laughs> no comment uh-huh. <laughs> did How the door did the happen last... to the last headmaster? <laughs> How long did the last headmaster serve for? Mm, Twelve years. Did the headmaster try to study you? Unfortunately. Can you restrain yourself from murdering faculty? I, I've never murdered anyone in my life. I can show you where he is right now if you wish. Uh. He's a statue. Please tell me he's not a statue. He is sure. All right. I need everyone to make a reflex save as the floor disappears. <laughs> Oh, boy. The floor disappears. Where have I heard this before? I cast Featherfall on feather myself. Fall. I cast Featherfall. <laughs> is it too late to cast Glide? Uh, it is not Give too late cast to cast Glide. Fall. And... <laughs> I think Featherfall ca covers more than one creature, right? Yeah, Grimini will cast Featherfall on a bunch of people. Wait, it's it's an immediate reaction. Like, all three spellcasters instantly. <laughs> Featherfall. <laughs> As you guys, <clears throat> are transported. One second, let me get all your figures. All right, you guys can move yourselves. Oh no. Oh, you guys aren't in roll 20. At least some of you aren't. Shame on you. The bottom left corner of the map, there is a revealed area. Oh boy. That is very small. Uh, and uh, we will take 10 minutes here as I both need to use the restroom and finish doing a few last minute touch ups on the. I was not on the sorry. Uh, a few last minute touches on the, uh, the dungeon as you guys have just um, fallen down in the middle of, uh, in the middle of the dungeon. Cursed by incessant curiosity. I was really hoping you'd say yes. Oh, is... You just knew how to get us to. <laughs> this is the combat I had prepared, so yeah. Uh, Alright, be right back. Wait, so you mean something went according to plan for once? It's for once, right? I mean, I had backups, but this is the one I'd, like, prep prepped. Oh my god, this is being so weird with moving my characters right now. Holy shit.
All right, so the tower is attempting to murder us. I think that's an instant. Uh, he doesn't, you know, qualify anymore. You also can't get rid of him, though. He said he doesn't. <laughs> <clears throat> it's fine. He's t he's just a happy little tower that wants his job. Besides, you asked for this. Literally, I didn't ask for you this. you did. You said, "Please show us." He said, "Do you want to show us?" And I said, or "No." I, he said, "Would you like me to show you where he is?" And you said, "Yes." yes. And I said, "Sure." And he I is showing you where. <laughs> Just because you weren't expecting it doesn't mean that he's not giving you exactly what you asked for. He's disqualified. I'll have you know. <laughs> It's a good thing your vote only counts once. I'm pretty sure everyone else is going to put him in that same category. Probably, but <laughs> until Attempted we know that for to sure. to murder uh, interviewers. <laughs> Minus 10 points. <laughs> Minus 10. 10 points from Gryffindor. Almost done. I blame Grimly. So, I got a, a couple fun class features from my discipline swap in Archivist. Oh. I add half my psychic levels to any knowledge check. Nice. And I add half my archivist levels to a knowledge check of my choice. And that's uh, fun. Pretty high. Stacking it all on Arcana, obviously. All right. I'm going to use the real quick, and then we should be ready. I'm going to bring it back, too. Ah. Hmm. I can't actually find my token. Wait, what the? And I'm back. Yeah. I got kicked out of the get here. Let me just try rejoining.
Hmm. My audio is kind of weird. I'm going to drop and then rejoin real quick. <clears throat> I think that fixed it. Is everyone back? Yep. Present. Oh, way. Yo. Um, the pink vial that you had, you still have with you, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. but you did uh, accidentally spill a little bit on roll a d4. Ami is one, Grimly is two, Trayrin is three, and two is four. Oh dear. I swear to God. Okay. <clears throat> All right, you spilled it on Trayrin. I try and, uh, do I notice it? Um, roll of perception. Sure. Does, uh, 34 hit? Uh, it, you don't hit anything, no, but you do notice it. I You have, uh, try. you have some kind of pink bubbling liquid on your left arm. Uh, since I usually wear sleeves, I try and rub it off. Do you want Ami to press to digitize it? Yeah, it's probably I'm back. Why are people rolling things? Uh, pink goo that um uh, that way had boiled up uh, got spilled on Trayrin in the fall. I'd rather not. Oh, on no. second thought, I'd rather not. You know, get my clothes messy. So if you could press digitation it off, it would be. Ami zaps it off. It doesn't go away. Oh dear. Uh -oh. Uh, I might need some help cutting this off, okay? I'll pull out like two daggers of my own and get to work cutting off the uh, one on my left sleeve and then my right. You are now sleeveless. Okay. <laughs> I need to get new clothes later then. Sleeveless is better than whatever the hell else that could be. I mean, the major domo is gonna give us new clothes anyway, so we should. Yeah, but I like those ones. Later. Wait, hold up. Did you accidentally make like sovereign glue or some shit? Um. So this potion, can I? Oh. Later, later, we'll oh, check. I wanna, I wanna, I wanna use, I wanna use my item, but it's gonna take. A... You you wanna use your item? Well, we by the way. Here. I have a formula Olympic. I can determine what that oh, what yeah. that is. Uh, isn't there a time restriction on that though? Yes. It's up to you. <laughs> oh, it's a box. Okay. Hold on, I'm looking up what the time restriction is. <laughs> God, it's for one hour. It would take you an hour to to figure out then, yeah. I will uh, store the vial securely, or the potion securely, uh, and determine what it is. Okay. Is it possible for me to get a different icon for Grimly, by the way? Uh, yes. What do you want? Wait, where is Grimly's icon? Oh, yeah. Uh, you're a... Just not that. You're a pretty lady now, right? Something like that, yeah. <laughs> could you just one you could do like one of those like red? I think that's something a red cloak would be a good red cloak. Yes, I would... yeah, red shirt. You know, <laughs> I just kind of die horribly every session. <laughs> um, I'm trying to see if there's one that is a caster with a red cloak or something that looks vaguely sylphish. I'm working off the free assets here, so I don't have a lot to choose yeah, from. Yeah, I, I know. It's just that the previous one just doesn't fit the colored appearance anymore, so. Uh, I got a blue one. Blue's fine, just I don't want to be confused with army. Yeah, that works. It's officially gender neutral, too. It's very nondescript. Yeah, that, that works. Controlled by... Whoa. Uh... Should be yours now? Uh -huh. Yep, thank you. All right. <clears throat> you guys are in the middle of uh, a stone pit, basically. Uh, I'm going to yell upwards, hey, door. Uh, hey. Door, door appears with his face right here. Uh, yes? Oh. 
What the hell was that about? Uh, you wished to see where uh, the old headmaster was. Yeah, but have you ever heard of something called stairs? Uh, no. Wait, you're a tower. Really? Huh? <laughs> you're a tower. Grimmy's just gonna look at him, but you're a tower. A, a mage not... tower? Fair point. Right. <laughs> so, uh, could you, like, magic us out of here? Up? No. What? Why? Because you want to see the headmaster. And if I didn't want to see the headmaster anymore? Someone who goes back on his wishes is no true ruler, now are they? How long would this take? Because we still have to make an announcement. Um, It shouldn't take you more than a few hours. Could take you ten minutes uh... if you take all the right turns. Is the floor still open up ahead? Uh, it's just black up ahead. You can't quite tell. So we can't go up? Okay. And I'm sure, you, if, do you have fly? Yes. So you can go up. But there's no light. There is no light. Oh. Hilariously enough, Grimly can't teleport back up because of dimensional anchor for nine days. <laughs> and I forgot to ask them to do that. <laughs> Yep, you did not ask to dispel. Yep. Oops. Uh, so, now what? Uh, well, you either <laughs> walk your way through this little maze of mine, like the last few headmasters, or you answer riddles. And if you uh, answer them right, I'll tell you which way is the best path. Guess this is what you'd really do for fun, isn't it? And if it? we answer wrong? <laughs> then I don't tell you. And something less than optimal happens. It's not a true game of riddles without stakes, now is it? Well, we might just try this. <clears throat> is this a door? Like this thing here? Yes. It's where he's talking. You you will notice once you go past here that there are a lot of doors. Ami lets out a small huff and goes through the door. Through the one that's talking, it doesn't have a handle? Oh, I thought he, he was... So, okay, how do we, so get... we just can't leave this room? Nope. I put up my insistent door knocker on the wall. <laughs> Is that the one that just knocks forever? It Okay, so... Um, I put a uh, a gargoyle face with a ring on the wall, and it creates a usable door that's up to a foot thick. Okay. That works as pass wall. Okay. You put it on the door, and then he, while in the middle of him talking, being like, that's rude. I would have just opened if you asked. I just want to ask riddles instead. We'll try them late, later, maybe after we've taken a look around. Can we just suggest? You can see us through this whole thing, can't you? I can see what. As in, you, as in, Grimley's asking the door, like, you're just gonna watch us. You can see us throw this entire base, can't you? Yeah. Oh god, we don't uh, have a tank. You do not have a tank of any kind. I cast Mage Armor on myself. What? <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting I for the day where armor. Barry and, uh, <laughs> like, all your tanks are gone. It finally happened. I don't even have my Drake. You do not have your Drake, although uh, should be arriving in a couple in-game days. Okay, at least I have that going. Alright, I'm gonna summon this big and tanky. Um... Well, don't summon someone right now unless it lasts no, a minute at a time. Not. But I need to find something, so I'm going. 
Also, size will matter, as you'll find out. It's not exactly a spacious area. And I cast False Life on myself as well. Okay. Oh. oh. <laughs> I'm, for the first time ever, I'm going to drink a Strength Mutagen. Oh. Nom nom nom. Which lasts for hours. Yep, yep, so does False Life and Mage Armor. So does Shield. Well, actually, no, Shield, I think, is 10 nope. minutes per level. There's a reason I swapped out. Yeah. I'll just cast Bark Skin and Grow Scales. Uh, are those... Aren't those mutually exclusive? Actually, no. They should be, but okay. <laughs> uh, bark Skin is actually an enhancement natural armor. It applies oh, it? on top okay. of anything else, I okay. believe. So he, has, yeah. so he has wooden scales. <laughs> Don't question it. I think it's actually one of the exceptions. Yeah, I, I don't re recall the exact terminology, um, but I did check to see if it was possible. Yeah, enhancement bonus provided by bark skin stacks with the target's natural armor bonus, but not with other enhancement bonuses to natural armor. Okay. So it does work. Yep. All right. Well, you walk through the door, and I revealed the little next area for you. All right. So when you figure out how we're doing this scouting thing, <clears throat> does anyone actually be is anyone able to disarm trap? Me. What's your perception you score? You sound so happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like me. <laughs> it kind of sucks when you miss your bard, your tank, and your uh, your other. The tank. Perception scores thirteen. Disable devices twelve. Mm. Better perception than I got. I'll probably have the highest perception, but I can't do anything about trap. Huh. Yeah, hey guys, I stepped on a trap. I found it. I don't think that's perception the way we by want to find traps. Do I need to summon another trap. sacrificial horse? <laughs> Yes, actually. Okay, I'll need some. I'll need some. I'll need some. I'll need some. Let me and find the horse out? again. You brought this on yourself. This has been literally every session now. It started as a meme, but it's like twenty, like six sessions. Why do you now. think I took that spell? <laughs> it's like twenty six uh, sessions. Ami is the, the only I like not dying. <laughs> the horse summoner ethics is definitely true, though. You want a, a dapple gray, a black stallion, a speckled? Let's go with the black stallion. I want right. a pink pony. Too well, you bad. can't have one. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Damn it. Now, let me make that proportions correct. <laughs> nope. That's just... Lengthen that horse. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. We can just assume the horse is walking okay. in front of us and we're all kind okay, of a, a distance copy behind. Out. Copy the mount spell from Ami and then summon all the pink ponies for it. All right. Well, the horse is standing in front of two doors. Get the horse to pick. Okay. The I'm horse will go here. through the south one, I suppose. What do I see Which door, way? horse? You Which see a door. door. Oh, god the, damn it. Ami casts open close on the south door and has the horse go. The horse needs to make a reflex save. Sorry, trying to find... Okay. Hey, this is on you, Summoner. <laughs> hey, guess what fun spell, or spell I picked up? <clears throat> Fifteen. Uh, the horse uh, is impaled for... Let me roll it. Eight points of piercing damage as spikes come out from on the ground as it triggers a pressure plate. Oh, okay, so not that way. Uh, Ami casts open close on the right door. Okay. A hallway then... appears. Okay. Uh, can the horse fit in the hallway? And go... The horse can't turn around. It can back its ass up. 
Okay. It can. Um, it would re-trigger um, said pressure plate. Would you like to fine. do so? Um, he unsummons the horse so, and we go, horse I is guess. Gone. I saw something purple fly across the room. And she summons the horse. <laughs> she summons another horse right here. Alright, you summon a horse. No, no, like, like the other way, like the long way, so that it can actually go down the hall. The horse <laughs> cannot fit in that square because it is uh, two squares long, and that is only a one square area. As there it is, is that doesn't a make door. any sense. <sighs> Ami cast open, close on, you need to, Ami cast open, close you on the door, and then summon the horse. You can't see that door, though. The horse oh. vision does not translate into Ami vision. I mean, I mean, he's being blocked by the horse. Exactly. I made I made this thin. I made this thin specifically because I knew you'd use a horse. <laughs> <laughs> because you've done it the last three dungeons I've made. <laughs> Can I check the hallway for traps? Yes. You can, however, summon something that's not a horse. I just specifically got tired of the horse. It's only going to last a few rounds. It's not going to be helpful. Fair enough. It's a 19. Uh, 19. There doesn't appear to be any traps in this. Oh, I had the wrong thing. So... Okay. In this hallway. Uh, the door is open. The horse can turn the corner. And okay. it does, but your vision is not there. Okay, it's walked follow? safely, so yeah, we follow the horse. Alright. The towels are like slightly off, I think. I, I know. know, I know. It's yeah. if you've oh. ever made a roll twenty map though, it's hard as fuck to get them on yeah, no, I, I I have, so I, I know what you mean. I'm just ripping you for it. Uh, if you move it while holding alt when you select, you can move it and it doesn't um it doesn't count it doesn't snap. Like you can just place so, like, it anywhere. I guess my question is, are we using the we're using the map towels, not the grid? Yes, I yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, is there another door? There. Is. Can I just perpetually check for traps? Uh, yes. Um. Open close. Another door. Uh, it doesn't work on that one, unfortunately. I'll try yeah, knocking normally. Okay. Knock knock. The the door appears and says, yes. Who's there? Me. <clears throat> oh, you're not fine. <laughs> okay, so... Can you let us through? Would you like to answer a riddle? I'll humor you. <clears throat> I have many tongues, but cannot taste. By me, most things are turned to waste. I crack and snap, yet I slay whole. Fire. <sighs> <laughs> You're no fun. And he opens up. Neither are you. I'll pass the end check for cast on my way <laughs> I'm just like, fire, get, get me out of here. <laughs> I'm, I'm just had enough of this shit. <laughs> so, another two doors? Uh, we'll can we bring the horse still? <clears throat> uh, the horse, sure, if it has somewhere to stand. It can't exactly walk through you guys like a, a medium-sized creature would. Okay. Grimly come, move. Come this way, we make a path <laughs> for the horse. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> uh, open, close on the south door? It opens. Open, close on the right door? It opens. Hmm. What are we feeling, guys? Does it matter? I'm gonna Which way, this... door? <clears throat> I'm going to use a spell called Sift to do a perception check looking for traps in the right room. Okay. It covers an entire area. Great. But I make the penalty, or make the roll at a minus five. Oof. The center tile is a pressure plate. Oh. Uh, 
since we seem to be obviously going through a dungeon, uh, Grimly is going to cast heightened awareness uh, on herself. Took him that long to realize, huh? <laughs> wow. My action can actually cover like that entire room. It's a 10 foot cube for Sif. Gonna be about an hour and a half long, but like bonus for perception. Okay. <clears throat> Uh, I sent the horse into the south room. Oh, you did? Uh, well, I did just now, sorry. Okay. Uh, the horse vanishes. Huh. Detect magic on that room? Uh, there does seem to be magic there. Seems to be uh, illusion. Spellcraft. Oh, okay. So the horse is actually probably still there. Um, or there's a whole covered by an illusory lore. Um, do I hear anything? Like, does the horse make a sound when it vanishes? Nope. Hmm. Grimly will take a, pull some twine out of his rope, out of her rope. Uh, is there a stone or something nearby? Uh, make a luck check. Sure. Luck, luck, luck. I think my luck is just neutral. Oh wait, no, my luck is... Twelve. Um... There's a few pebbles. Well... Uh, tie a pebble to the end of the, of the rope. Toss it through, try to toss it where, through, through the door where the horse was. Okay. With the rope still attached, yeah. Uh, does the rope does the rope whole rope vanish or like the does the rope just continue true? Uh, the rope vanishes too, or whatever like, goes th past the door vanishes. Also, I pull back and then it it's like it got cut, cut off at the door, so to speak. Well, if you pull it back, it comes back through. Oh, okay. Oh. I'm just gonna like stick my arm through it, you know. Your arm vanishes in front of you. Do I feel anything? Uh, horse ass. <laughs> 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 You're giving the horse a prostate massage. Uh, no, no, I'm not. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna walk through it, okay? Uh, that's the wrong door. We're talking south. Oh god, he stepped on the pressure plate. <laughs> no, you die. No. Uh, but yes, we're, we're talking the south. Right. Okay. Step through. Uh, what is your passive perception? Uh, isn't that like regular perception minus 10 or something? Yes. Or is it 31? Is your passive perception? I mean, my uh, perception bonus is plus 21. Oh, wait. That would be a so plus 11. 21. In it. Yes. <laughs> Holy shit. I was about to say 31 is your... <laughs> I was like, Jesus yeah, Christ. Was... You're like, <laughs> I am God walking on Earth. I notice everything. Um... Okay. Uh, the other than the fact that there is now a, a horse standing in front of you, the room looks normal to you. Okay. Can I do a more thorough inspection? You can use your active. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> uh, Thirty-eight. All right. Uh, you've realized that you're inside a gelatinous cube. What? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, roll initiative. Oh, boy. I, I thought I would feel this earlier, you know? The, the whole point of a gelatinous cube is that you don't notice until you, it's too late. It, you can't see it, and you literally walk into it. <clears throat> Which is the reason I asked specifically for your passive perception. But you are now engulfed by the gelatinous cube. Well, sucks to be you. Uh, we continue on our way. As is the horse. You can't leave the horse. The horse is like just suspended there, isn't it? <laughs> uh, pretty much, yeah. I'm going to do my best, best to hold my breath. We'll get you out. Uh, actually, make a luck check to see if you took a breath before you walked in. Like, oh. like whether you were exhaling or inhaling. <clears throat> Uh, I rolled a one. 
Uh, not natural. Okay, not I was natural. about to say, I was like, uh, you fully exhaled and just breathe in slime. Um, <laughs> with one have uh, a bar of soap. Well, with a one, let's say you took your, you were breathing out. Let me double check on the breath rules. Why are you in the bar of soap? I don't know. The last time I felt, fought an ooze monster in Pathfinder, somebody beat it with a bar of soap. Because, yeah. Alright, so normally you can hold your breath equal to twice your con modifier, or your constitution score. Uh, I'm going to say it's Wait. just your constitution score now. Uh, and that's only if you do nothing other than take uh, a move action. Uh, if you take a standard action, that duration uh, is halved each time. Okay, so that would be a plus two. No, 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 no. Your, your score. Your oh, score. of course. Sorry, 14 then. Uh, Wait, where, where are you? Like, in the cube. Like, he I don't is see you. in the cube. You cannot see where he is in the cube. Oh, we don't have vision of him in the cube. I cannot you, see myself either. You don't either. have vision of the horse either, but I can't... For some reason, I can't make the cube go on top of the horse. This is an opaque gelatinous cube? Yes. That's uh, what no, they all are. Yeah, uh, and they're all pretty much opaque. I thought they were transparent. transparent. Okay, never mind. Trans they're transparent when they're actively hunting. They're oh, okay, so this is... Uh, all right, sure. They're horrifying. <laughs> Scary. I, I thought the point was that they were transparent, so you could see, like, the, the bones and shit floating in them and stuff like that, but... All right, if you can't see that, that makes it... I'm going to hide yeah. the area just so you'll forget where Trayon is, just so I can add him and click on him to add It to... would look like junk on the ground. I was going to say we could, like, use a teleport, try to teleport him out of the cube. <laughs> yeah, it would just look like a bunch of crap on the ground. Does Army have, like, 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 benign transposition or something along those lines that to, like, swap? I don't think it's, like, a country just put it does No. I mean, I mean, we can't cast it on it anyway, because he's, like, in the cube. If Ami Let's was see. stuck in it, she could teleport herself out, but Ami's not Maybe stuck can't. In. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> Someday I'll, dispel, really... I'll, I'll just dispel this somehow. You really cannot. Uh, you could wish wish it away. No. No. <laughs> um, Alright, Trayrin. Oh, that was the 15. purple thing flying past the screen earlier. That oh! was, yes, that was the gelatinous cube. I, I was hiding it off air, off, uh, off the the map because I I remember it was like, well, it's supposed to be hiding. <laughs> <sighs> Would it co cost an action for Grimly to like try to figure out what the weaknesses of a gelatinous cube is? Uh, that is called a deep study action. Yes, and you can actually use a knowledge check. Uh, to find, like, to deeply study something to see if you can learn something about it. Got, gotcha. Uh, what did Kaloran get? Oh, I didn't even roll one second. My bad. Uh, so many sheets. <laughs> you should only have two. Although I suppose you have your monster sheets too for Kaloran. I have a bunch of information open right now. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Plus three. Plus three, okay. That's two. So two has an eight. And that's Calrin. Calrin has a five. Look at those low rolls, boys. All right. To start us off, um, Way, your friend and your friend's horse walked through a door, suddenly disappeared, and uh, that's about all you know. Uh, I need everyone out in the hallway to roll perception checks to see if they actually see the uh, gelatinous cube. Nope. Ami does oh. not. <laughs> uh, two does. Okay, let's see what As gets. now that it is combat, it only has like a stealth check of like 15. So everyone but Ami does. Uh, Ami, that doesn't mean you disbelieve that it is there. It just means that you can't actually 
see anything specific, so any targeting would be a bit more difficult. Uh, well, I'm just going to cast Flaming Spear in the center of the room and have it ant, sit on actually. The... But, way it is your turn. And you do see the outlines, faint outlines of a gelatinous cube. Uh, okay, okay. Um, can I... Can I summon an earth elemental right next to it and then have it move into the gelatinous? You cannot. Uh, no. Unless you're talking... Uh, wrong button. Unless you're talking here. You can't summon inside the room because the gelatinous cube takes up the entire room and you cannot summon a creature <coughs> into another creature's square. Right. Mm -hmm. So it would, basically it would summon at the door... Yes. And then have to move. Yes, and it would have they to be able to get burrow, through the door. So they can burrow. They can There's burrow also a through... medium earth elemental, so it is small enough. Oh, it is medium? Okay, then yes, you can yeah. do that at the door and it could go through. Okay. So y'all ha have it do that. Move into the... I will summon a medium earth elemental and have it move into the gelatinous cube. Did Treyron fail his fortitude save? Make one? I don't uh, think we've rolled that yet. We have not rolled that yet because it is not the gelatinous cubes or Treyron's turn. Uh, <laughs> for simplicity's sake, the Earth Elemental is going to be a giant spider. All right. <laughs> but it is okay. a, a very earthen spider. And I'm actually uh -huh. going to give control of that to... To... Grr. You should be able to control where it goes now. <clears throat> uh, right in the middle. Okay. I don't know. Uh, it needs to make a fortitude save as it is now engulfed. It, Natural 20. <laughs> it, it's fine. Uh, it is not paralyzed. However, it is still engulfed because you just voluntarily walked into the middle of a gelatinous cube. Oh my god. Yep. <laughs> but it is not paralyzed. Should It should be able to attack the gelatinous cube, uh, I believe. It should, but the gelatinous cube does get an attack of opportunity because it is engulfed. Okay. Which, wait, who's the, the cube? The, the spider is paralyzed. The spider is not paralyzed because it rolled a natural cube 20. Is it is engulfed okay. just because if you occupy the same square, you are engulfed. All right. Does a 23 hit the Earth Elemental's AC? Yes, it does. All right. You take seven points of acidic damage. I'm just going to start a tally. Oh, no, it's immune to acid. Ooh. It's stone. It should be immune to acid. Hold yep, on. It is immune to acid. Well, um, <clears throat> yeah. It, it might still hurt an earth elemental. Um, I think this is talking about worked stone. I'm not quite sure on the rules. Like, out of character? I think you. I know I read that. I know I read it here somewhere. Well, no, anyway. The, the gelatinous cube uh, doesn't harm stone, which is the thing. I'm just making sure Earth Elemental yeah. is immune to it. I'm looking at the stat block now. It is immune to exhaustion, paralyzed, petrification, poisoned, and unconscious. Damage to bees and knees, poison. It is not immune to acid. Mm. Okay. But it is immune to paralyzed. Here we go. So it takes seven points of acid damage. Starting a tally. <clears throat> okay. Uh, I'm going to have it uh, attack the gelatinous cube. Okay. I don't really know how that works uh, thematically. Try tearing. to tear it. Uh, 
Uh, where's the... It's a slam attack, plus nine. That was 14 to hit. Uh, 14 to hit will miss, actually. Oh, that was a bad roll. Well, Earth Elemental's just hanging out. I mean, that's that's a really bad roll, to be honest. Yeah. <laughs> because gelatinous cubes are insanely easy to actually hit. They're basically yeah. just health sponges. Uh, next up, we have Grimly. Yeah, uh, Grimly will study the cube, try to figure out if there's any weaknesses or it can recall anything. All right, roll a um, knowledge dungeoneering or a knowledge nature check because they are natural oh does a 15 uh i, I won't recline it but it gets a plus one if both uh, creatures are touching the ground ac so defenders would okay. die so it would still miss but now you know what they see like oh, i said for, for y'all's level level seven and eight <laughs> hitting it will not be the big problem uh, uh i got on that i got on that one of that uh grimly yes its weakness is acid. A, a lot right. of acid. Guys, we gotta hit it with acid. And, and please, I uh, please, I understand that it's kind of hard, but don't metagame it. You yeah, are yeah, convinced know. that it needs acid. And I actually don't have acid spells, so <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, it. it's okay. Guys, it's weak to acid, we should hit it with acid. <laughs> I don't have any acid spells, I'm sorry. Like, take this out loud. But that was your action. Yeah, that was my <laughs> Unfortunately, action. it did not work. Um, uh, but you can tell that it has a uh, a weakness to acid. Yes, a horrible, horrible <laughs> weakness to acid, guys. I know it's hard to metagame when you, the player, knows the die roll was horrible. But try to keep in mind, your character doesn't know the die result. Oh wait, I have the ability to change spells to acid. I'll do that. Okay. <laughs> Ami. Um. Ami casts flaming spear right here. Okay. And then has it move towards the gelatinous. All right. I don't well, actually I know how that say... interaction works, so let's <laughs> double check. Because the sphere isn't a creature. In the Correct, it's creature. just on fire. And I'm just reading up on things. Okay, so flaming sphere cannot occupy the same square as a creature. Correct. Including well, the not Well, not quite. So I have to summon it. Not on the <coughs> there as a creature, which is why I'm summoning it by the door. However, it can move 30 feet per round and enter a space with the creature, in which case it stops moving and deals fire damage to the creature. Okay. Okay. All right. What is a gelatinous cube's reflex save? <laughs> <laughs> It's a great question. Is it a positive score? It is, is it? I'm not going to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is the save it needs to make? Uh, well, I'm going to spend an Arcanist point to up it to 90. Okay. It fails. Uh-huh. And we'll take... It takes 3d6. Uh, how much is 3d6? 11. 11 points of burning damage. Uh, also, um, what does it do to adjacent creatures? Does it do anything for adjacent creatures? Really? Yeah. Flaming Sphere doesn't damage things around it? No. I mean, it, if the thing is flammable, it's gonna set it on fire hmm. if it's touching it, but it doesn't do anything to All right. nearby things. In that case, Trayrin won't catch fire as well. Next up. I like to consider myself as very inflammable. Charon, it is your turn, and I need a fortitude save. Oh dear. You can do it, I believe. Not. 
You believed? Maybe? Oh. Uh, 20? Uh, actually, no. What? No. DC is 21. What? Yep. Oh. Uh, you are paralyzed for 3d6 rounds. Oh, no. The cube can automatically engulf a paralyzed opponent, but you're already engulfed, so that doesn't really matter. Uh, however, it does mean you are helpless. Ooh, that's 11. 11. For 11 rounds. Um, okay, I'm depending on you I'm guys here. This, there is no save every round, so you're just paralyzed for 11 rounds. And a lot of disc cubes are hard. Yeah, if you get engulfed, they're insanely hard. If if you don't get touched by them, they're insanely easy because they can move five feet a, a, a round. This one also can't fit in yeah, the this door. This one cannot fit through the door. It literally can't move. <clears throat> Which means it can take so a full round action So we just have to kill it to before Treyran suffocates. Basically, you need to kill... It is now a race between Treyran's health bar and the thing's health bar. Speaking of... <laughs> That does uh, not sound very good. Uh, you do take a d10 acid damage. Uh, well, actually, one sec. Let me double check that. I'm assuming this thing doesn't make attack rolls against me. Yeah, I think it's. It, I think it's just auto damage. I'm, that's what I'm double checking. All right, so here's the rules for engulfed for a gelatinous cube. Uh, you take 10 damage every round, acid damage, that, uh, that you're engulfed on your turn. So go ahead and take 10 damage. Yep. And then you, uh, it also, um, you count as helpless against its attacks. It can't coup de gras you, but it does mean that it's a lot easier for it to hit with its slam attacks. Um, and while you are engulfed, any damage the gelatinous cube takes, there's a 50% chance that you take it instead. Of course, that is only a 25% chance because the horse is there too. Okay. <laughs> actually, so, actually, well, doing... actually, it's, it's a, um, it's like a 12.5% because there's a earth Spider. elemental there too. <laughs> what I'm hearing is that we should start filling it with things. <laughs> Just full it, chock full of that. things. So I mean, how many more horses can you summon? <laughs> oh, you're about to find out. Uh, do keep in mind, creatures can't occupy the same space, and it is filling up. I will summon a bunch of tiny creatures. <laughs> I will summon a horde of Gregs. The, they would just, on, uh, honestly, they would just almost automatically just die, though, from the 10 really? acid damage. I will find something hardier than Grimms. <laughs> you get a game this system? Uh, now this is called metagaming. <laughs> Sorry. Alright, can you just kill the darn thing before All right, I die? So, uh, well, I'm take, doing my best. Take 10 damage. Now it's its yeah. turn. It's going to do a full round action to make two slam attacks against Treyran. Uh, Treyran, what is your AC without armor and without dexterity? Ooh, I think it's okay. probably just 10, but in case you had any natural modifiers, that might change. Wait, natural modifiers, you said? Yes. Okay, so I get that. Because plus... being helpless does not get rid of natural armor. I would have a 15 then. Okay. Or, yeah. So, 15 not counting your reflex and not counting your regular armor? Actually, 16, because I have Ironhide. Wait, does that even stack anymore? I was going to say Ironhide. I thought you just had, uh, what was it? Uh, wood, wood, Barkskin, bark yes. Barkskin, and... Um, I think it's just a natural armor bonus, not an enhancement bonus. Yeah, that's what it says. And this only counts, like, the only modifier you should add to your AC right now is natural armor bonus. Then there would be a plus six. Okay. I didn't know Barkskin gave plus six, damn. No, I have a Wild Shape, Iron Hide, and Barkskin. All that easy. <laughs> it's all natural, too. Um, all natural. It's easy. all natural, baby. <laughs> Organic. 
Uh, all right. It will make a full round action. Um, first one will miss. Second one hits. You take... Eight points of bludgeoning and four points of acid. I don't think the damage type actually matters if my armor doesn't work. Uh, I am just going to say every time out of habit. Uh, what is this red thing? Is that important? It's a climbing sphere. Oh, okay. That's a nice sphere. Thanks. Uh, um, next is two. You, you can draw a circle right. by holding out. <laughs> oh well. I cast, um... Spectral hand. I make a small little hand beside me. Okay. <laughs> roll 1d4 and I'll lose that many hit points temporarily while the hand exists. Oof, nice. And uh, that'll be my turn. Okay. Your apprentice? Or should I say indentured servant? Um sort of <laughs> uh, what can I do with him okay I forgot he had this spell um, I'm in casting an uh, empowered snowball uh, he will need to be in line of effect which he is currently not in that square well now he's a line effect <laughs> All right. He's going to cast an empowered snowball, which is against touch AC. Range It'll touch hit, attack. I'm sure. <laughs> wow, it, we'll see. Touch AC see. is four. Oh, goody. I know what I'm doing next year. <laughs> well, they, oh, holy shit, here we go. <laughs> Roll a D10,000, please. <laughs> nope, I'm taking two times damage. Aww. All right, in yep. that case, please roll... Uh, go ahead. We'll start with a D2. Uh, don't roll a 1. Just to see if it hits the right target. Uh, I mean, I'm throwing it at the cube. It hits the cube. Yeah. The damage it takes, though, doesn't necessarily go to the cube. Fair. Because there's a 50% chance that it... Okay. In this case, it does, though. Okay. So, I'm rolling the damage. <laughs> It's 10d6 right now, <laughs> and then it's <coughs> multiplied by 50%, so get ready for this, boys. Third so, damage. Uh, 45 damage. 45 damage. All right. It's an empowered snowball. <coughs> it takes it like a champ, and, and the only thing this thing has going for it is HP. <laughs> can, can it be staggered? Uh, a gelatinous cube cannot be staggered. Okay. It is immune to staggered. Well, Thank you. I did a lot of damage. I hope you enjoyed that. Way. Um. Oh boy, do I want to? Do I not want uh, to? Way, I need you to roll me a luck check. Okay. Okay. Carry on. Oh wait, no, that's a, actually plus four. So fourteen. Yep. All right. Okay, carry on. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw two bombs because uh, I'm okay. good at that. Uh, you take a minus five penalty to throwing your bombs because okay. the flask is stuck to your hand. Oh no. Oh jeez. <laughs> oh no. That's okay, it's a touch AC. Uh, let me add all these modifiers up really quick. <clears throat> more more correctly, the pink goo 
from the sla uh, flask, some of it is stuck to your hand, which is stuck to the flask. There. There's my there's my two bombs. Uh, so a 10 and a natural 20. All right. Uh, let's roll these separately. Roll two separate D2s, please. Sequentially. So, long story okay. short, Trayron, you're going to owe me. The non-crit hits someone in the cube. The crit hits the cube. So, uh, let's figure out damage for the non-crit first. Uh, now roll a d3. Uh, Trayron will be a 1. Uh, the elemental will be a 2. And the horse will be a 3. All right, the elemental. All right, uh, roll, damage. Da roll damage. All things considered, uh, Trayren, you, you're getting pretty lucky for being engulfed. I think if anybody else was in here, they'd be in real trouble. But oh, I purposely the horse, made sure. the horse and the elemental also took that ten damage. Sorry. Ah. Uh, yeah, I'm going to have one more. Just made it one out. Wait. Sorry, you're about to be really thankful for me. The Elemental takes 23 gets. points of damage. It's still alive. <laughs> Even after the 10 and the... Uh... Yeah, okay. barely. Just making sure. All right, now it'll, for the it'll crit. It'll die next round. Please roll a... Do you want double damage or an effect? Uh, effect, because I just reread the rules on bombs, and it only multiplies 1d6 of the damage. <laughs> yep. <clears throat> so, effect. Uh, roll a d10,000, please. I'm really curious as to how this table works with the Delanus cube. Uh, if it's you something, if it's something non-applicable, I just re-roll. I mean, there's ten fucking thousand things. I'll hit something eventually. Eh, who knows? Awful lot of arm cutoffs in there, I think. Well, yeah, there's like a couple hundred, but when you take a couple hundred compared to like dismemberments compared to uh, to ten thousand, it's not actually that much. Well, he rolled a nine thousand eight hundred and seventy-four. Yeah, most of the dismemberment stuff is on the six thousands. Uh, and just so you you all know, most of the teleportation shenanigans are in the seven thousands. So, <laughs> <laughs> uh, nine thousand is almost done scrolling. Reality warping. Uh, what? Um. um. So, uh, what was uh, or what is normally normal is now rather off. Effects up to the GM. I'm just gonna <laughs> leave you to it for like a good nah reroll. Three minutes. That one's too much uh. work in the middle of combat. <laughs> Jeez. <clears throat> Dangerously close to the six thousands. <laughs> Trayrin's teleported away. <laughs> um. <clears throat> Resurgent. Uh, you gain HP equal to the amount of damage dealt in uh, for the next two rounds. Uh, some this... divine force has decided to bless you. <laughs> So is this like you get life link for two two rounds? Okay. Uh, what is your total HP plus your constitution? That Not the would modifier, be just the constitution. Uh, sixty one. Don't deal more than sixty one damage. I in two rounds. Uh, in one round. Okay, I don't think I can. Because if you do, okay, so here's the thing: how positive energy works. If you gain your health plus, or if if you're at max health and you go over your maximum health plus your constitution, you pop because you are so full of positive energy. So since you're uh, at oh, maximum so health, you don't want to go over double your maximum health plus your con. Right. 
All right, one positive energy does, however, dissipate after one round. So as long as you don't do 61 damage in one round, you'll be fine. Or I suppose you could just stab yourself if you get close. That was 16 damage All right. with that. 16 more on the gelatinous cube. Is there an AoE effect? Uh, there is. Uh, I can exempt up to three do you, squares. Do you have to... Three squares, you say? Yes. Which squares are you going to pick? Actually, I'm just going to move... Uh, well, I assume I'm hitting the part of the gelatinous cube that's closest to the door, because that's... You know, okay. That would make sense. So I'm exempting the two squares right in front of the door. I guess I can exempt the one behind it. I don't know. I feel like this is going to backfire. I'm just making... I'm Since he is blind, I'm making sure that he remains blind for his exemptions. Or blind to y'all's location. I'm just picking the most, right, most logical and... ones. Treyron's in one of them. <laughs> exactly. I thought about mentioning it, but I thought it might, might be more fun this way. <laughs> Alright, how much damage do you deal? Oh, that was 16. Uh, 16 damage. Ugh, 16 fire. I might be able to survive another round, but let's try not to go there. <laughs> I thought, you yeah. know. Grimly! Yes, I am convinced that this thing is weak to acid. Oh, sorry. The the um, the splash damage is seven. No. Oh, okay. Okay. I'll probably survive another round, but I'm not going to count on RNG to do that for me. Grimly will cast flaming spear as well, but use energy and make sure to turn it into an acid spear. Um, is there space? Is what? Is there is there space for for Grimly to put, put the spear? Uh, if you do oh. not, um, you're not throwing it into melee, so that that's not a problem. There being people in between you, unless you roll a one. Okay, so, so don't all right, roll a so, one. <laughs> Otherwise, okay. you'll peg Way or Ami in the back of the head with an acid spear. That sounds funny. no no no. This, this, <laughs> wait, sorry, um, I'm a bit confused here. What what am I rolling a one on? Isn't spear, is, is there is there attack rule for flaming spear? Uh, is there? It's a reflexive, same as same as uh. Oh, yeah. flaming I mean, spear. I thought you said spear. Yeah, sp sp flaming spear. Sorry. Okay, I I thought you said spear. Okay, um, there's room right here, I suppose. Actually, you could summon it. In the doorway, basically. Yeah, I'll do that then. Okay. Uh, there is not currently room for it to move into the creature space, though. Uh, so before you summon it, I'm just letting you know that. That if oh, it so moved it be... into the creature, it would end on top of either Trayron or the horse as well, which means it couldn't occupy a double... We're getting into creature stacking, and it doesn't work like that. You mean you can't put like four people in the same spot? No, <laughs> you can't. <laughs> so, so basically, I can't. Ca I can't cast a uh, flaming. I can't cast acidic sphere. You cannot to cast. Hit it. You can cast acidic sphere. You can't do the thing that acidic sphere needs to do to damage, which is move into the same square. Right. Okay. So because of the geometry of where it is, oh the, god, the squares right next to its opening are occupied so it can't move into a double occupied space inside a gelatinous cube in gulf works right. in weird ways <laughs> right okay no i i get that can i change my action then if yes. i don't want that's what i was saying okay. before you do this oh <laughs> uh, because that that means that the only spells left i have that i can turn to acid would be fireball which i don't think i want to do <laughs> yes yes please cast acid fireball <laughs> Center it right oh, I there. <laughs> I, I'm just gonna drop magic beside it then. Aw, oh, boring. Alright, sorry. Roll a D2. D D2? Okay. Alright, mm -hmm. it hits the gelatinous cube. Or right, dam yeah. damages, I should guess I should say.
So give me a second. <clears throat> I forgot how much better damage magic missile does. Uh, D4 plus one, and I, the number of bolts depends on your caster level. Five and nine for. Uh, nine, I think it's five, but I'm not positive. <coughs> Might still be four. Uh, 20 points of force damage. Alright. The four is from intense spells. As it is now up to 80 points of damage. Next, our favorite mute, Ami. Um, I guess first I'll roll Flaming Spear. Okay. Reflex save. Uh, reflex save will happen first. Uh, it rolled an 18. That is not a 19. Alright, uh, well that's about... It rolled an 18 on the die, and it has a 0 to reflex, so... <laughs> so <laughs> here we go! Pretty much only passes on a 19 or 20. Uh, first off, roll yeah. a, a, a D, a D2. I forgot to make you do it first time, but oh well. All right, now roll a d3. One is Trayrin, two is the elemental, three is the horse. This is Trayrin. <clears throat> Trayrin, you take seven points of damage. Ouch. Sorry. It's just to make um... up for the 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 bomb, which was actually less damage, but now it's basically the same. <clears throat> Debating. Honestly, I didn't expect. I didn't expect this to work. <laughs> In my defense, okay. I don't. I've never fought a gelatinous cube before. No, no, I, I didn't mean that. I just meant I didn't expect the the gelatinous cube to wreck someone this hard. But it's mostly just because of y'all being unlucky on the who who's it's hurting rolls. And I'm fact, a little confused of how we're doing this because. I thought that the more enemies that are in there, the less chance he has of getting hit. Why yeah. is it? So the so... more enemies in there, less chance. So you roll um, uh, 50% I'm of very confused. Okay, so here's how it is. 50% chance that it hits something that is not the gelatinous cube. And then the, the oh, second yeah, roll okay. we're doing uh, of which, since you did the 50%, which of that 50% okay. is which of those three characters? Okay. Does that make sense? Um, yes. I think that's the uh, right way to do it. Please don't hate me if this turns out poorly. I'm <laughs> going to use Summon Monster 4 to summon 1d3 Lantern. And I summoned three of them, so I'm sorry. Uh, before you do this, keep in mind what I did just tell Grimly. Yep, I'm not sending them in. Okay, I'm just making sure. Uh, I summon one of... Sorry, it's kind of hard for me to see the good, but I summon one here, okay. and then the other two are here and here, okay. and then Ami will also move back here, and then she will... I don't know if... Can I just... How do you want me to draw them? Uh, you can just make them little squares, okay, unless it so really matters. One is they, here. Yeah, okay. Well, it does matter, because I have to aim light rays at them, but... I was going to have the one, so I have one here, and then I have one here, and then I have one here, and I was going to have this one that's, basically they're going to rotate in and out of that square so that they can each shoot <laughs> rays at the thing. So um, hopefully okay. that's okay. Um, all right. Uh... <laughs> Don't hate me, please. Okay, so here, here's the thing that, I understand, which I could be incorrect about. They are they get their movement independent of each other, right? Yes, that's correct. One, each of, each one, one has to have, has to have a turn. Yes. Uh, just so you know, they can't all do this in one turn because they couldn't move, then shoot, then move out of the way again. Right. That's okay. why I'm summoning them in shifts because yeah, just, I think there's sure you know. I think there's one more square here that I'm if I'm unless I'm seeing this wrong. I don't know. It's uh, hard for me to tell because of the 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 thing. The thing. Yeah, the grid thing. 
Like it's very hard for me to tell where the squares are lining up. I know, but it we're, looks we're like just using the squares on the map. We're not using the battle grid. Then yes, there is another square here that's unoccupied because there's one square here and then one square here. So I'm there are two spots for them to rotate in, and that yeah. should be enough, I okay. think. I, I was just making so sure that's... you were aware that they probably all three couldn't probably fire at once. But you can probably Correct. get two a turn. Yes. Uh well. <laughs> Uh, so the first one is going to use his two light rays, so that should be 2d6, and it's ranged touch attack. Yeah. Uh, still, I still want you to roll it, because yep. it does have an AC of 4. Yep. <laughs> or a touch AC of 4. 15. That will hit a 4, so go ahead and roll a d2. And 14, so that'll also hit First one will hit one of the three creatures. They will both oh, hit for one goodness. of the three creatures. Why? The, yeah. <laughs> it's a 50 50. I'm sorry. Um, all right. So well, they uh, the elemental, the elemental is dead because it had one HP. Um, okay. Yep. The horse um, takes a light ray to the face. Okay. And or to then... the ass, actually. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this one is done, and it still has a move action, so it's going to move over here. And uh, now the next one is By the way, Trayran, go... I'm sorry this is so boring for you because you're paralyzed. But unfortunately, yeah. unfortunately this is like, that's just how it happened. I've never fought a gelatinous cube. I've been paralyzed at least four times. <laughs> Not in and this, this one but... shoots two light rays and rolled 20 and 8. All right. Uh, 8 still hits. Uh, that will hit one of the two. I keep He's hitting Trey Why is this happening? <laughs> okay, so both of those will hit either. Tra Wait, actually, it's just Trayron. Both of those hit Trayron. And the horse. But... Oh, yeah, and the horse. Or the horse. So roll another D2 to see if it hits the horse or Trayron. Right, uh, the horse. horse. And then the second ray. And, horse. and the horse. They okay. both hit the horse. Which should be close to dead. Yeah, it should be dead after that. Okay. Uh, does it die after oh, one? Okay. Because if it only dies after one, then Trayron would take. The no, it does not die after okay. one. But now it is dead. So next. But now time, it's dead. Yeah. Next time, anything that damages fifty percent chance again at Trayron. Of course, this does mean grimly that there is room for a flaming sphere right here. Now that the horse is dead. Woo! <laughs> Uh, what are these rules? Well, okay, this is really <laughs> stupid. <laughs> Ami's just murdering Trayron over here. Uh, next, speaking of Trayron... I mean, there's no way for me to get him out. Trayron, is your turn. You're paralyzed. Unfortunately, nothing happens, uh, except that yep. you take 10 auto damage. Oof. Uh, now it is the Gelatinous Cube's turn. It is going to double slam attack again. The first one is a 17. Does that hit? Yes, it does. Right, and the second one is uh, eighteen, so that hits too. Oh. Uh, so since you are hit by both attacks, you are engulfed. Oh god. <laughs> well, I mean, he already was, so it, it doesn't change anything. Um, you take the first one is eight points of damage. Uh, four bludgeoning, four acid, and then the second one is. Nine points of damage, five bludgeoning, four acid. I am hanging on by a thread. All right. How damaged is this cube anyway? Oh god. Uh, it uh it only has eighty HP because about half total of the damage all have dealt has done gone to other things. Oh dear lord. Uh, it would probably be close to dead if everything y'all had hit it with damage had damaged it, but that is not the case. I, I will actually die the second. Oh, I'll, I'll go unconscious the second I take another point of damage. Oh, that's fun. Two, it is your turn. How big are these little fey things? They are small size. Lantern archons, yeah, small size. Uh, how many small size creatures can fit in the tile? Four. Or no, two. Perfect. It's four, it's four fine that can fit in a single tile. Two is small. But two small creatures Perfect. can fit in the same tile. All right. Um, 
I give uh, Traer the good old remove paralysis spell. What? <laughs> uh, okay. Um, I I hate to do this, but uh, before that, I'm gonna need you to make a DC twenty perception check to make sure you can see him. All right, then. I'm also using Burst of Insight to increase my wisdom by an effect of 8, so plus 4 to my perception. All right. I'm... I love immediate casting spells. <laughs> uh, here we go. You see him. Uh, only well, you see him, but he is right there. Well, he's not paralyzed anymore. Uh, I don't think that's going to help when I'm going to die yeah, on my he, next he's turn. He's going to go down on his turn. Guaranteed. If you, know, if you guys blast me first, I might just straight out die on that turn. Uh, hmm. um, knowing that, uh, I don't normally like to do this, but we did discuss that earlier, so I'll let you retcon your action if you would like to. Me? Yes. Why? He's going to die on his next turn regardless, is he not? That's what I'm saying. I'll let you retcon that you cured the paralysis since he's going to die the next turn anyway and we already knew that. Oh, hold up. I need to get something. Uh, I will give you this because you would know this. Uh, gelatinous Cube is immune to most mental effects. And oh, I, I, I know you're a mental caster and you probably already knew that, but I'm just making sure so you don't waste an entire big thing on it. <clears throat> hmm. Alright, in that case, I instead uh, use my spectral hand okay. to cast uh, Cure Moderate Wounds. Alright, you cure moderate wounds on Trayran, I'm assuming? Yep. Okay. So <coughs> it is a total of... Uh, click to the right part. Is a 2d8. Plus four. So here we go. There, eleven points back. Okay. That'll keep you through at least the auto hand. damage. This this is why this is why I picked spectral hand. <laughs> I can make a ranged touch attack. Decks. Or touch spells really. And the best part is it's ethereal. Is that your turn, too? Really. Yes. All right, next is your apprentice. And here's the fun part. All right, so I'm going to cast... <clears throat> Get ready for this one. This is going to be fun, guys. Steel size on the gelatinous cube. <laughs> what? Oh. <laughs> All right. That is pretty cool. So Does it have it a needs... save effect? or? Yes. Fortitude, 19. Okay. Fortitude, 19. Does actually have a good fortitude save. I'm willing to bet that's its only good save. Uh, it has a plus 9 fortitude, a minus 4 reflex, and a minus 8 will save. But it is immune to yeah. most mental effects, so the will save isn't a huge issue. <coughs> well, go on. Roll the 21, roll. so it, it saved. Which is actually a good thing, because him suddenly becoming huge size would do a lot of unintentional damage to the people standing right next to him. Well, <laughs> no, he would go large size, and uh, the cube would go down a size. Oh, I thought it it's just swapped it were the size. Large, oh, person. okay. I thought they would just swap. I was like, if he suddenly just becomes, like, what I was imagining was him suddenly just doing this. <laughs> <laughs> and I was just like, that's going to prove some issues. <laughs> nope. I was trying to re up a little bit of space there. Huh? Okay. Now, that would have worked, but unfortunately, his one good save is Fortitude. Or it's. I suppose it doesn't really have a gender. Uh, next is Way. Yes, it is. I did not expect a single fight in this dungeon to last this long. <laughs> but to be fair, this probably is the most complex fight. Mostly because I didn't expect y'all to get engulfed. Um... Uh, 
Should I cast Slay Living on it? Oh, please, <laughs> please, and just fifty percent chance no. of auto kill, <laughs> Trayron. I mean, Slay Living would be a good spell to cast on it if Trayron wasn't inside of it. I know. <laughs> just like it's if, a problem. Just like fifty percent I mean, chance Trayron just see died it before you go for it. Oh uh, man, this is uh, I d I'm, I don't have spells. I bought you a turn. I bought <laughs> you a turn. Trey. Way run up and punch it. <laughs> That'll totally be a good idea. I mean, because it's either either I nuke it or I nuke Trayron. Unless you have something, some way of getting me out of here, you're you're gonna have to try your luck. Yeah, because because unless any of you have a way to literally move Trayron, uh, you're gonna have to end up having to damage the thing to get rid of it. Ironically, I have like three ways of getting <laughs> myself out, but you know. Uh, okay, okay, we're going I to might have a way to get him out if I can perceive him in there. Um. That okay, way. I'm gonna summon. Ami, the one, answer uh, is yes, but you would have to clear that entire area because it's a large what? creature. the The answer is yes, but you'd have to clear this area because it's a large creature. And I thought it was just long. Uh, okay. The giant mantis is yeah large. Long is still large though, so it takes up two squares. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately, it's, that... it's the same okay. as the horse. I'm gonna summon one d three ponies. <laughs> I mean, you can, but where are they gonna go? <laughs> I'm just gonna have the them cube. move into the cube. <laughs> uh, oh, it's just a one. Damn it! I mean, you can summon one, but you can't get three in there. But you could summon another horse and stick it in there to make it a fifty percent or a fifty fifty. That, if that's yep, what that's, that do. is exactly what I'm trying to do. All right, he summons a horse inside of it. Well, it's a pony. Summons, it's a little he horse. It and then it runs inside of it. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, a, it's a mini horse. A, a pony is horse. still a large creature. No, it should be medium. A pony, or is this specifically yeah. a miniature pony? Hold on, hold on. It's medium. It's a medium creature. All right. Uh, speaking as someone who owns ponies, they're definitely not mediums. <laughs> no, but, they're uh, not. <laughs> but for, for this, I guess we will have a miniature, like an actual miniature horse summoned, right? And then go run straight into it. Uh, it is in gold. Make a fortitude save. It passes the fortitude save. It is not paralyzed. Come on. It will take 10 auto damage, but it can attack. Because I summoned it with someone monster, does that allow it to take on a uh, simple? A simple what? <laughs> For instance, a celestial template, which is... Uh, what level of summon monster did you use? That was Summon Monster 2. Uh, I believe for it to have a template, um, basically to add a template I think it's to four. something, it's the tier above. So if it's a level, t like a, a, a Summon Monster 2 animal that you want a template, it would need Summon Monster 3. So, so you could use Summon Monster 2 to oh, summon yeah. a Celestial something that you could normally summon with Summon Monster level 1. So a pony. Although you just told me it's level okay. two. Uh, the pony itself is oh, level yeah, one, it but it was a, summoned it with level pony. two. There's a celestial pony, so it's damage resistance five for acid. Yep, it does. So it takes five damage. Guys are so cruel. <laughs> All you're doing is feeding it. <laughs> Yeah, except that it's eating, and then it's dis the food is disappearing literally from its stomach. <laughs> it's like, ah, oh, nom nom nom, aww. 
I mean, it is dissolving something. Well, I mean, to be fair, this thing literally doesn't have an intelligence score, so it's not like it's missing anything. Uh, for uh, nope. this time, can I try to... Oh, sorry, are you done? Sorry, go on. Well, the pony needs to attack it. What's it the penalty on a... Uh, on, uh, a minus on a 10. Non, yeah, minus... Minus 10 if you're engulfed, because you basically count as being uh, restrained. <laughs> Roll a D10,000, please, good sir. Oh boy. What the fuck? Maiming. You irreparably uh, maim one of your appendages. Still has three legs. So basically it broke one of its legs. We're going to have to put it down. <laughs> uh, and it takes uh, either a d4 con damage or uh, a d uh, 2d12 damage. Uh, well, it's good. D4 con damage. It can it can eat D4 con damage. All right, roll a D4. <clears throat> Three con is. Uh, that puts it at eleven, so that's a minus two to its max. Yeah, con damage is ability damage is a lot less concerning on um, summoned creatures <laughs> mm -hmm. because the whole thing about uh, ability damage is most of the time it's at least semi permanent. Right. Oh, by the way, uh, I forgot. Well, after this combat, remind me to give you the effects of filth fever. Oh, yes. I need to cast remove disease on you. <laughs> All right, next is Grimle, who still believes that it's immune to acid, or that it's weak to acid. <clears throat> But also wants to get Trayron out. But also wants to get Trayron out. Probably. Maybe. Okay. Uh, can Gribbly make a perception check to try to see yeah. Trayron in there? It's a DC 20. Okay, good. <clears throat> yes. So you guys remember the toilet spell? Toilet spell? <laughs> There's an actual oh, no. spell that does something like oh, that. No. I will cast telekinetic charge on on Trayon from inside. This launches him this telekinetic launches him from out of the out of the sphere to somewhere else in range. I'll let you do it, because I can't let me do anything. Read up on this just to make sure we're getting everything right. Across the battlefield. Okay. I saw this so, and I was so, like, oh god, so here, it's the Here's the spell. thing. Here's the thing. It needs to be in a straight line to yep. somewhere that you can see. I'm literally He needs to move of... in a straight line. I was literally he, he just launching is, him yep. this to is, where... Oh. This is where he is. Oh. I was just... I was... Can you move in a straight line to like the square next to Grimly? This looks like a straight line to me, boy. Yep, he can. I mean, this this could work too if if the cube wasn't like just right next to it. The cube will line. get. <laughs> okay, so here's what basically happens because of the oddities of the spell. Grimly and the cube are gonna make opposed grapple checks. <laughs> and <laughs> if Grimly wins. Trayron gets launched out of the cube across the uh, across the battlefield. Um, and if the cube wins, it just holds on to him. Uh, uh, what do I use for the grapple here? Because I, I, I grimly not will my be physical using scores. your intelligence modifier. All or, right. You're you're rolling a grapple check using intelligence instead of strength, basically. Should I just treat this like how telekinesis does grapple? Uh, yes, actually, you should. Totally should. 
Let me look that up. Because I remember Kalkanesis has a grapple thing. Uh, combat maneuver, uh, blue rush, grapple, resolve in terms of normal set, they don't prefer uh, Cast level in place of your CMB, intelligence modifier. Yep, okay. So that's, oh, that, that's, actually, that's actually doable then. Alright, roll it. And you gotta beat its combat maneuver defense roll. Uh, I wrote low, but <laughs> thank god for the hit, hit ban. Alright, so here's the thing. Alright. Its combat maneuver defense is a 19. So Shit. an opposed roll's defenders win. Oh, how about. Damn it. Alright. However, no, tried. however, next round, you could try again. I only have one of that. She might be dead, uh, but we could try you can, again. Can, I mean, remember, if you drop to zero hit points, you aren't dead dead. You could get his body out and still, yeah, like... Yeah, but like... I, mean, I, was hoping, I was hoping to be like, Haha, guys, it's the toilet spelling. I mean, I mean, to be fair, if you'd got him out, it does say that it provokes attack of opportunities as normal, and since he's a helpless target, he probably still would have taken damage, but... But he'll be out, uh, but he'll be out of the queue. Sure. Uh, yeah. Because, because uh, here's the funny thing, uh, which probably isn't actually funny to Trayron, unfortunately. Once a, once something dies in it, it just starts dissolving. That oh, is yeah, not very funny. amusing. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, I... Uh... I don't have any. I don't think I have any other moves here. Uh, yeah, sorry. All right, Ami. I I will impress upon y'all that this has been basically an entire round of combat where y'all haven't damaged it, which could be good or bad. How many things are in the cube? Right now, two. I take the twenty-five percent chance on a slate living myself. Unless you think you could just kill it with regular magic, or find out uh, some other way can, to get me out. I'll let everyone make a perception check to see how. I guess wounded isn't the right term. Uh, how much like eaten Jello the gelatinous cube looks like versus not eaten Jello? It's a weird way of describing it. I mean, slay living's a melee touch attack. It is. She would have to run up and touch it, or have a way to cast it from range. I mean, I could cast... If I cast Black Tentacles, can they try to grapple Trayron and lift him out? Like, out of yeah. reach of the gelatinous cube, okay? They could try. Um, that's, the same, that's an the option. The same attack of opportunity thing would happen. That's okay, at least he'd be out! <laughs> I personally um... think you should do Slay Living. I well, I don't know. like your plan. <laughs> <laughs> I have no qualms. Like as a GM, no. I have no qualms in killing Trayron. As, as a person, I understand. I, as a person, I I know and I understand that would feel shitty and it would kind of suck. But as a GM, I'm just like, eh, if you die, I you think die. we're going with black tentacles. <laughs> no, wait, how how can you even mess up Slay Living? You literally touch the side of the cube. Yeah, you just run up and poke it, and it either kills Trayron. 25% chance, yeah, or it doesn't. Yeah, I know! I don't want to kill Trayron! <laughs> how can it kill Trayron when it's a touch attack? She literally just needs to lightly tap the side of the cube. Because it's damage the cube takes. It's not. This isn't a, I accidentally hit Trayron. This is, the damage went to Trayron. I'm Trayren casting Black that. Tentacles. All right. And it's in a what? 20 area radius, and so I, I center the radius. Well, I guess I need to five foot step this way first, but I center the radius, like... Basically around the gelatinous cube, and I have it try to grapple trick. All right, uh, roll a grapple check. Let me find the numbers. <clears throat> Caster level as base attack bonus and plus four due to strength and plus four. So that's a plus thirteen. Okay. Uh... Grapple, grapples Trayron. Yeah, we got him out. Uh, well, okay. you, you have him grappled. Do you want to move him out now? Yes. All right, Trayron. Yes, I will. Yes. You're taking uh, attack of opportunity. The, do I get my regular armor? Uh, you do not, because you are still count as engulfed because you are leaving the thing. Ah, okay. 
So um, still 16. Also, he- here's the thing. Because of the way Gelatinous Cube happens, if it hits with a melee attack and you're paralyzed, you're re-engulfed. So oh if it God. hits with its attack, <laughs> you're pulled back in. Oh, jeez. There's a giant Trayran tug of war is going on. Oh, no. <laughs> well, well, I don't okay. see a better option. And. Does a 16 hit your AC? No, a 16 hit your AC. Hey, you're free. <laughs> okay. Can I, like, drag you. myself out? <laughs> I just uh, drag myself out here. Uh, you are still paralyzed. You cannot drag oh. yourself anywhere. Okay, so I'll have Omni drag me up. <laughs> uh, oh, you bet. Uh, you meant the pawn. Yes. Uh, yes. You, you could. Uh, you said the the black tentacles are here. Yeah, twenty foot radius centered around like wherever twenty. I guess here. Twenty foot. This radius. would make the most sense. Or right, well, like here. I don't know. I'm trying my best. Okay. Uh, what would be the furthest they could reach, is what I'm saying. I suppose you can, like, pull way. me back away from the cube, and then you get to I thought we were... Manually. I thought, okay. They can reach way. No, they cannot reach way, because we are going by the grid on the map, not the grid grid. So I could aim it further away and have it not grapple everybody. So, one, two, one... To okay, yep, so they, so would, they be, would end they up would at, end the, at the door, basically. Correct. Yep. Okay. So I, I grappled. Yeah, Trey Run is by let's, the door. Let, let's hope that it doesn't re engulf you when it attacks its food going away. <laughs> oh, that would be funny. Because this is very turn, stressful. Trey Run does not take the auto 10 damage. Oh, good. It still can't do anything else. And now it is the Gelatinous Cube's turn. Oh boy. Wait, no, it's not. I didn't finish my turn. Oh, I apologize. Please continue. I'm something? also trying to figure out how I, if I can, like, um, if I dispel it, is it a free action or? Dispel the tentacles? Yeah. Uh, dispelling would be a minor action. Okay. Um, I, th- Okay. Uh, unless it's concentration, in which case you can just stop concentrating. It's not concentrate. I'm okay. trying to think. I'm trying to think ahead a bit. So if I dispel it and Trayrim goes falls to the floor, I guess. Um, but then the gelatinous cube gets to move after me, so I need to figure out a way to get him away from the door. <laughs> um, can I have my lantern arch and try to drag him away from the door? Trayrim, how much do you weigh? I'm a full-blown humanoid, uh, so with armor on, right? Yes, it's over 200 pounds. Okay, let me double check. Lantern Archon Strength Score. It has a strength of one. It can't. Okay, that's even a no. All three would not be able to drag Trigrin. Need to think of something else then. Um, you have a once, pocket horse that could drag me. For once, weight no. comes into <laughs> into play. No, I understand. That's why I'm asking these things. Um, 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 um. Can I? Hmm. <laughs> Any ideas, guys? Yes, let him die. <laughs> guys. <laughs> Oh, what if I if I make if I what if I trick the cube by making a lantern arch and fly into it um, as I'm pulling Trayron out so that it doesn't think that it lost anything it or so that it thinks it that it doesn't got nothing. Think. But yeah, but then why would you tr- What I'm saying is it's instinctual. So you could try something, I suppose, that played on its instinct, but uh, tricking, it doesn't, it's immune to mental effects is what I'm trying to say. Is So you couldn't really, min- like, trick it to do something that you wanted it to. I'm just going off of what you said, it would try to instinctual. Trayron's prone, right? Trayron is prone. Well, he's grappled right now. I haven't dropped him yet. I don't know what to do. Make the Archon float above them. Done. In fact, why don't you make two of them float above them? 
Okay, let's do that. I'll just spell the black tentacles. All right. All right. To be fair, so it doesn't sound like ne on my next turn, I'm going, ooh, ha, ha, I'm a smart GM. I'm going to let you know, before you do this, um, its slam attack just hits a square. Like, like it hits a, in front of it. So just because there's something uh -huh. in, on, above it doesn't necessarily mean that, that, that those will deter it. I, I'm letting you know so, I w so I'm not basically, ha, ha, I tricked you. Okay. <clears throat> wow. Of course, this, this next what attack doesn't do necessarily do? mean Treyran is going to die. If if it hits him and it gets the engulf, it would be another grapple check that you could potentially stop him from being engulfed again. Hmm. I'm going to keep... The, uh, okay, the Black Tentacle is still grappling Treyran. Also, I didn't do this, but um, the, the Tentacle actually does do damage when it grapples, so okay. I can roll that. How much? 1d6 plus 4. Okay, that's not too bad. Go ahead and roll it. Oof. Churn takes 9 damage. Okay, okay. that is very close. But if it makes you feel better, if something tries to take you back, I think it gets a plus 5 on a grapple check because it's already <coughs> grappling you. So hopefully it's not going to take your body back. Sure. Okay. Sorry. Actually, you're right. I'm not. I'm not gonna retcon it. But now that you said that, the gelatinous cube would have gotten the same bonus and would have kept Trayron. But I'm not gonna retcon that. <laughs> wait, wait. Would it? Uh, yeah. I think so. Oh, it says it specifically for the black tentacle spell, which is why I don't. I don't know. I'm just. I'm just reading the grappling grappling rules that in in someone it. tries to Honestly, grab it. Honestly, I've never tried to touch deep into those. Um, okay, sorry my turn is taking forever. I'm trying to not let Trayron die. Um, <laughs> That's so, so, so Trayron is still grappled, and, and now we're going to do the Flaming Sphere. Damn okay. It. So reflex save, uh, roll DC a, 19. Yeah, okay. Uh, it rolled a 19. Defenders oh, it's time. safe, okay. Nice. All right, and then the Archons are going to take pew, their pew. turn. All right. Mm, well, we're, no. No. Since since the Wait. circumstances have changed, we're gonna have this one use aura of menace. So did, did the sphere not do damage? No, uh, it made it safe. Succeed. Succeed. What? what? It can't succeed at a minus. Uh, what was it? Four. No, no. It has a reflex save of zero. And it rolled a 19, so it's okay. This is an elite template gelatinous cube. Okay, so... Uh, Mostly because in a normal a normal gelatinous cube would have died to, like, one attack from you guys. Okay, uh, so I'm going to have one of my Archons use Aura of Menace. Uh, so it's a DC 13 will save. Will save, you say? Mm-hmm. All right. It rolled a negative one. Sweet. So it took a it takes a negative two penalty on attacks, AC, and saves. All right. Uh, and then the other two are gonna pew pew, pew time. I'll move them afterwards to. Okay. But I'm just gonna roll things. So I'm guessing they all hit. Do uh, I need to roll all, hit the horde? Are these touch attacks or? They are touch attacks. Okay, then yes, they all hit. Uh, you do need to roll uh, sequentially. Yeah, two hits the horse or doesn't hit, doesn't hit. What do you mean it hits the horse? No, it doesn't hit. I doesn't hit what? the horse. It. Okay. Doesn't hit the horse. Hits the horse. Okay. Eleven damage. Okay. Eleven three 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 horse. horse is still alive. <laughs> Sweet. And now I'm gonna move these things or try to. All right. Is your turn done? E yes. All right. Sorry. The gelatinous cube. 
Uh, well, first off, horse takes ten or five damage because it's celestial. Now it's dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, horse is dead. Um, <laughs> it is going to attack the closest thing to it, which is Treyarch. I'm going to use a full round because it can't move anyway. So two attacks. Treyran only gets engulfed, or the grapple check in this case, if both mm -hmm. attacks hit. Okay. The first one will hit for 10 points of damage. Okay. And the second one, your AC is still 16, right? Uh, do I not get any armor bonus outside of my natural? Uh, you're flat-footed. Yeah, you you're flat-footed. Well, oh, in the previous case, you said I only had my natural, well, but... Well, it, you're, ha you're flat helpless, so you don't get... You're, yeah. So you're flat-footed. Just armor. That would be 20, actually. Okay, that one's still hit, because it rolled a 21. Shame. Flat-footed helpless. It's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, flat-footed help us. Yeah, your AC shouldn't be changing. Hmm, I'll need to look at this later. So is it a 20 or 16? Let's see. Uh... The first one hit regardless, because it was a 21. But Yeah, sure. But for the second roll that I haven't done yet, <laughs> it will probably matter. It's but, treated as having a dexterity of zero, so yeah. you basically lose your dexterity modifier. Oh, well, when I was engulfed, you said I didn't have my armor bonus, when only my engulfed, natural. You didn't. Okay, so I would have twenty right now then. Twenty right flat -footed. now. Okay. Yep. All right, let's roll again, and it rolled a twenty on the die, so it doesn't hit you. Yay! <laughs> you're not <laughs> engulfed again. You're not engulfed again. Uh, thanks to the cure moderate wounds, I am just barely dead. <laughs> All right, barely alive. We'll At patch you up. Don't Sixty-three worry. Guess what? again. Treyran now owes two his life. <laughs> I don't. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> Take that how you will. Two. Okay, so two. It is your turn. Do you want to like pull me out of here before I get killed? Do I? Nah, yes, put, that, that's kick the him back goal. in. Kick him back in. <laughs> The goal is to have the tentacle drop you and have Ami heal you. I'm sad I didn't turn. get a player kill. At the same time, I do know that there's an entire dungeon still ahead of you. All uh, this effort <laughs> for you one fight. <laughs> this is probably the longest gelatinous cube fight I've ever had. <laughs> um. Well, unfortunately, I'm not going to pull you out because. <laughs> Two is weak as shit, and behind Calrin. Yeah, and he's still grappled by the Black Tentacle. I'll dispel it on my next turn, but... Now's a perfect time for Grimley's Fireball. Excellent! Yeah. <laughs> Beat acid, acid Ball, because he's weak to Acid. Yes, Acid Ball. Plus two. If you can have Calrin... Move out of the way. That would maybe be helpful like, too. I literally didn't I, think this would be an issue because it can't get out can of the room. Because then I can summon something. Because then I can summon something bigger to actually pull Trayron out, and then we won't have. The... Uh, I I didn't expect the 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 paralyzed to actually hit. So what I expected was one of you to walk in, spend a round or two going oh shit, and then pull your way out, and then be done with it and nuke it from orbit, because I... it can't chase you. <laughs> Is there any space between Trayron and the cube? Is there any space okay. between There is no cube? space between Trayron and the cube. Hold up, I need to ask something. Because um, it does matter. Uh, what is the CR of the monster? Okay, this does matter. The CR is 7. Okay, so I need to beat a DC 17 check. And then I'll grant everyone a plus 1... Bonus to attack rolls and comet maneuver checks against this thing. It's an immediate action, so. Um, really should remember. Oh, the archivist before. thing. Yep. Um, it's <laughs> also now you know why. It's impossible for me to fail. I'd like to remind you. Uh, if you roll in that one, you still fail. That that is that is just a rule. So, you pass. Okay. 
so I'm taking that's just the of this. that's just a way of keeping all things, including bosses and shit like that, honest. So it's like I can't fail. It's like well, you still could fail. <laughs> no one's perfect, but in this instance, you are perfect. Uh, rolling at a plus five, casting a shocking grasp with spectral hand on this okay. thing. Uh, is there anything metallic in it, by the way? Roll a luck check. DC 15. There is not. Alright, so I'm just do, going to plus... Do, do you not have a modifier? Nope. Oh, okay. How tall is the cube? Uh, the cube is at least 20 feet tall. Okay, Shit. That's my touch attack. <laughs> uh, I believe your touch attack hits. 5d6 electricity. Takes All right, points. as it is shocked through, <laughs> and it does start looking like some wear and tear is starting to show. <laughs> All right, well, uh, he was also going to shift over. There we go, and that's his turn. Calrin is dumping another empowered snowball into it. <laughs> Roll it. Attack modifier. Five. Is that against touch or AC? Touch. That will hit. Uh, it takes 27 points of damage. Alright, it's looking real close to the edge now. There's chunks starting to fall off, and it looks like it's starting to melt, kind of. By the way, Halloran has almost zero non-conjuration stats. <laughs> way! Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna throw bombs. Okay. Uh, uh, hello? Please? He can, no? exempt, he can exempt your square now that he can oh, see you. Oh, okay, sure. Okay, that works. Unless I miss. Unless uh, he misses, he does have a minus five. Very nervous oh, about wait. this. I'll let you make the bad decisions. Sorry. I meant to move There you go. Right, this is all versus touch, so basically I have to roll a one. Roll a one. Roll a... Well, you hit. And you hit. Yay. Oh, we can try to kill the cube, I guess. Uh, wait, is your minimum damage greater than 15? Uh, 4, 8, 12. Minimum damage is 12. All right, keep rolling. <laughs> <clears throat> Well, I think you killed it. <laughs> no, no, the minimum damage was actually 16. But oh, okay. Then, uh, I still wanted to roll. Basically, the gelatinous cube just like explodes outward. It gets all over everyone, but fortunately is not huh. acidic at this point. But basically, it's just a giant pile of slightly translucent purplish gloop goes every everywhere. Fantastic. So, uh, fun fact. Ami? Uh, Trayron is still paralyzed for the next. Like... I cast remove paralysis. No okay. I mean, you could just wait, but sure. No. I cast cure serious wounds on him. Okay, roll it. I need to figure out exactly how much this thing lets me roll. Wait a minute. You have cure. Yes. Hmm, I say. 16. That was low, I'm sorry. But at least you're probably not unconscious anymore. Yeah, I uh, wake up with a start and I pat myself repeatedly over the body. <clears throat> uh, from what I gather, being paralyzed in a gelatinous cube is the most painful experience and traumatizing uh, thing I've been in so far. Imagine, have you ever accidentally 
touched anything like acidic, like in a chemistry lab or something. Of course, like, and many starts, times. Yeah, and it starts itching really bad. Imagine that over your entire body, but amplified by about 20. That's what yeah. being in a gelatinous cube feels like. Because you're literally uh, to... slowly being dissolved in digestive juices. Yeah, uh, I'd, in character, I'd probably compare it to uh, what I imagine to be hell. <laughs> Hell is the inside of a gelatinous cube, and I'm just gonna sit here in silence for a while. Um, Bef okay. Uh, before casting cure serious wounds on myself. Uh, okay, way. Uh, you are removed of the disease you never got to find the effects of. Aww. Also, is this a bad time to ask what the mirror does that I have? Because you told me to ask in session, but then one thing, like, I didn't want to interrupt the interviews and stuff. Um, I mean, Ami can pull out the mirror and see. I'm going to say she pulls out the mirror to try and check how messy she looks before remembering she can't see herself in mirrors anymore. Uh, and she then sees Yafazar's face and says, yes, what is it? <laughs> I'm a bit screams. busy right now. Does everyone hear that? I'm sure everyone hears her scream, yeah. Fair. <laughs> she she, she lo looks around to see if anyone's paying attention and then shakes her head like and waves her head like, never mind, and puts the mirror. Uh, as to Yaflazar, <laughs> everyone can make a perception check to see if they heard him. <clears throat> but you all did hear... Ami basically pull out her mirror and go, ah! <laughs> I'll say if you're old 25 or higher, you hear Yathazar as well. <coughs> yeah, nope. Uh, which, Ami, now that you know, uh, this is a mirror of a tomb to scrying. Uh, oh. um, specifically, it is attuned, at least at the moment, to Yafozar. Okay. Uh, to attune a mirror of scrying, basically, you need a drop of a person's blood. And then you okay. inscribe their name in blood on the surface of the mirror, and then you can scry them at any point, whether or not they have anti-scrying magic on them. Can I do this for multiple people? No. Okay. <clears throat> do, did we hear Yathazar? Uh, if you rolled a 25 or higher, you heard Yathazar. On perception? On perception. <clears throat> So Treyran heard Yafazar. Everyone else just heard Ami pull out her mirror, or saw Ami pull out her mirror and then go, ah! <clears throat> and then put it away. Everything all right there? She seems unsure. It's not cursed, is it? She shakes her head. Uh, also, ironically enough, uh, in the loot of, or basically in the bottom, not quite dissolved yet, you guys find a small metal skull cap, which is a type of helmet. I use mage hand to fish it out. All right. Most of the I purple use... goo kind of slides off of it. I press to digitize it. It is clean. Now, is it magical in nature? Yes. It has abjuration magic. All right. Um hmm. Forget is it spellcraft or arcana to know spellcraft. Okay. So, let's only a plus 18. <laughs> Only. There we go. 
Uh, wh you don't actually know. The DC to identify is 25. Can I try? Yeah, I toss it to Calrin. <coughs> Never mind. <laughs> Bah. <laughs> he tosses it to Ami. Nope. <laughs> you guys have no idea. Although I suppose Grimmy can like, take a shot at it. Can I try? Nope. She Ami hesitates but hands it over to Grimly. <laughs> Grimly, uh -huh, of this, course. This is a skull cap of acid resistance. Which kind of explains <laughs> which explains why it's still inside the uh, inside the gelatinous cube. Which it's like, oh, so acid would have worked against it then, since it was wearing this hat. <laughs> Clearly, how devious! It addressed its own weaknesses. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying this resistant. loud. Yes, I take the cap from you and smack it on Trayron's head. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you what? Sorry. I take the cap from you and I put it on Trayron's head. Trayron, okay. you yes. now have yep. DR5 acid. Okay. Uh, and sure. if, if you did not have a helmet previously, this also provides a uh, specifically plus two to attacks that target your head. It doesn't add to your overall AC, but if anything specifically targets your head, you get an additional plus two. Neat. You mean this is acid, right? Yeah, uh, no, I mean DR. Wait, what? Okay, so, so resist. The difference between DR and resist is resist means it's um, that you take less of. DR just means it's completely canceled uh, the first five. Uh, in effective terms, the difference is usually non-applicable, but there are some non-damage oh, specific differences between damage resistance. So just, the oh, resistance. damage resistance, not damage, damage reduction. Damage I'm reduction very and confused. damage resistance. This, this uh, is damage, damage reduction, reduction 5 acid. But that's not how that works. Yeah, but damage reduction if it's five damage acid. reduction 5 acid, that means that acid bypasses damage reduction and everything else gets reduced. Da down. Damage reduction is something that has a specific uh, weakness yes. where resistance is damaged Okay, so if he gets hit by acid thing. damage, he's still screwed. Yes. So the, the, so okay. the, the, the point Just is... Ba okay, ha it's DR5, damage resistance 5, to everything but acid. Cool, just making sure. But it's called a cap of acid resistance. No, no, it's called... Uh, yes, I misspoke. <laughs> That's why we were confused. It, it <laughs> yes, is, I was it confused. Is, it is a cap of damage resistance. Right. Uh, can we parentheses leave this? acid, which acid is the <laughs> is the uh, the weakness. Well, slash yeah. acid. Slash acid. So it was weak to acid. I was right. <laughs> <laughs> it wouldn't have melted anyway, cause lol, it's metal. Yes. Well, Traeron, you're a tank, so I gave it to you. Okay, thank you. But now Traeron has five dr, except for acid. Well, I do also have to armor, but sure. So, how is Trayrin looking? Uh, two curious, serious wounds. I'm up to about 40% health. Uh, no, 60% uh, health. Okay, well, most of two's divine spells right now are support until I hit level three. So you I could you... flip the page. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't like Slay Living to begin with, so I would, but... All right. I got... Two more cure moderates on me, so here you go. I thought the whole reason of having a Drake companion was so I can have a buddy to be the tank with me. <laughs> it is. Hey, what's your, what's Trayron looking like now? With a you plus another thirteen in LOC two. I mean, to be fair, yeah, the either. um the two people or there's three missing, but the two people that aren't the bard that are missing today are your two tanks. So, oh, what's it looking like? Up to 52. So, damage-wise, you're looking how beat up? I was very, very beat up, but I am currently at, like, say, 12 HP below my max, so I'm fine now. 
There you go. You're fully healed. I'm gonna just eat a good berry for <laughs> measure's sake. Nah, you're fully healed. Sure, whatever. Wait, way. How much damage did you deal? How much damage did I deal? Was it more than sixty-one? No, it was. Uh... This is actually important, relevant question. <laughs> Uh, hold on. It was uh, 42. <laughs> okay. I don't think it's possible for me to do 61 damage unless I crit on both. Okay. So, here's a fun fact. To cast a spell this session that is on neither the Archivist spell list or the Psychic spell list. Indeed he did. Hi, Aldrin. Welcome to the Rebirth Psychic Discipline. Hi, friends. Hello. Hey, hey I almost died. Are you guys done? No. Uh, almost, but not quite. Oh, okay. I will wait. Continue. Um, that is a good... Actually, that is a good spot to, to bookend it, though. One <laughs> gelatinous cube. Yeah. One what? fucking gelatinous cube. This took two hours. <laughs> and you still have an entire <sighs> dungeon. You've covered literally, like, from the starting point, you are, as the crow flies... Less than 50 feet away. I'm never gonna get my orc mercenary <laughs> group going, am I? Oh, sweet. That means I didn't miss much. Uh, Actually, you know what we could do? We could go until the next combat and then stop. Because combats take time, we might as well get up to that point, huh? We, we are at that point because of Ami's scream. Oh, oh dear. Damn it, Ami. I'm just, what? I'm... <laughs> I didn't say she screamed super loud. She okay, just so screamed a little look, look because she saw a face look in the, her. Look at the map. This thing is less than 30 feet away from you. It heard the scream. <laughs> oh, Jesus. It's a bass. I mean, even if we didn't hear the scream, weren't we literally, like, firing? Yeah, you were firing, blasting like... spells and, <laughs> and shit like that. So Is this stereotypical yeah. dungeon? Jesus. This is actually a, a dungeon. A gelatinous yes. cube, a basilisk. Yep. This is a stereotypical dungeon. Uh, Jesus. And over here, uh, I'll, I'll re hide So it. where's the minotaur? But over here is the giant. Uh, the minotaur is right here. Oh, hey, there's the earth elemental. Minotaur Wait, is you... right. Hi, spider. Right here. Giant what? spider's right really? here. I wasn't kidding. This is stereotypical actual dungeon. Okay. Oh, God. <laughs> Jeez. I thought we were just going to find, like, Dead headmasters or something. You are. The dead headmaster is in one of these oh, places. No. Okay, then we need to find it, because that's an archmage loaded with fucking loot boys. <laughs> oh no. That um I mean you're presuming dog. Speaking out of character, loot. actually the archmage's gear is y'all's loot for the session. So once you find it, that is your loot. Also, fun fact, two doesn't need use magic device for arcane items anymore. That's fun. I use knowledge arcana. Nice. But yeah, that will be the session, and we'll start off with another combat. Um, I was merciful enough to uh, to let y'all heal up. But basically, as soon as y'all are like, all right, Trayron's all patched up. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, for reference sake, Ryan, we just spent two hours on a single gelatinous cube fight. Nice. I am somewhat glad I wasn't here for that. Because <laughs> oh. all the attacks were hitting like everything. You worked else. so hard to save Trayron. <laughs> Trayron did, did he live? Pretty damn close to dying. He lived. Uh, honestly, yeah, if you hadn't now. if you hadn't taken him out, he would have died died because of the dissolved next round. <clears throat> we fed it two horses and Earth Elemental. <laughs> You fed it horses. <laughs> they literally did summon horses just to run into it because the way a, a an engulfed creature works is if you damage the thing that engulfs someone, there's a fifty percent chance that that damage hits whatever it engulfed instead. Hmm. But a gelatinous cube can engulf multiple things, so they just kept throwing things in it, so there was a less percent chance it would hit Trayron, <laughs> <laughs> which actually worked a few times. If That's they funny. hadn't done that, Trayron would be actually dead dead. That's funny. <clears throat> well done, everyone. And, and this is the guy who says he's tired of my horse. <laughs> I'm tired of your horse being the lead element because it means I can't leave traps for anyone. 
Because it's yeah, like, oh, the horse died. Happened. The horse died. The horse died. <laughs> There's a reason why I like the horse. <laughs> have you never heard of delayed traps? Yes, I have. And I have several, actually. One of them releases a minotaur from a cage. <laughs> My, uh... Incidentally Great. enough. But yes, this is like, I, I just went full-blown old school. What is the most stereotypical dungeon I can build? So you have basilisk, gelatinous cubes, minotaurs. <laughs> you know what? I think this is an Earthbound reference. Mm -hmm. Off of Mr. Dungeon. <laughs> Who knows? It's actually Dungeon Man. Whatever. Mm. I am prepared. I am, or not prepared. I'm anticipating when you guys go for the other segments that were on your big list of things to do. Because the the Mage Tower is the most straightforward. All the others are a lot more, will give you guys a lot more freedom about what you can do and how to solve issues. And one of them yeah. is a murder mystery. You guys love murder mysteries, right? I hope you know how broken I am. <laughs> uh, by the way, the clump didn't do anything, right? The what? You you mentioned something about the clump. The, the personal items evolving with level 9 and then I think I asked you about this and then you said wait for the session nothing actually happened yet right you, you never tried to use it so no nothing happened that's true I never actually tried to use <laughs> it so <laughs> wait I thought you said his didn't because his is technically a new character or no uh, Grimley's? I, mean, no, I guess I was, it's the same no I was talking about Naram Oh, Naram, okay. Naram doesn't have personal items. Once That's your right. guys' original characters die, you don't get more special character-specific items. Mm. I mean, you I'm can glad Charon didn't die. I, yes. I was actually hoping he would, just because I wanted to see how the party would react. <laughs> we haul him off and use the treasury. Hey, don't say I'm rude. If I wanted, if I just wanted him to die, I would make him die. I know. <laughs> Still rude. <laughs> Again, we we could just haul him out and use the treasury. <laughs> right. It exists to be used. I don't know. Like, and using someone who or using it to bring back someone who holds an office is uh. I think it might be pretty hard to get me back to life if I get dissolved. You could reincarnate. Uh, what for? The fighting style? <laughs> no, I meant like if he died, he no, could literally I'm talking reincarnate. To Aldrin. Oh, right. Uh, I was just gonna talk to you in here, so I didn't have, we didn't talk over people, but that's fine. Well, uh, I, I, basically I, over, so. No, I know. I took it because. Oh, uh, ranger, a level in ranger or a level in wizard or sorcerer is required for gravity bow. Oh, and... you wanted to get that for yourself, I see. Yeah. And, um... Are you I mean... a bard archetype right now? Yes. He is, but, I mean, oh. ranger will allow you to use your bow a bit more effectively. And it still gave me the basic attack bonus to have the... Yep, you should still be able to qualify for, uh... Quali arcane right, archer. I'll, I'll qualify for arcane archer next, next level anyway. Uh, if I had, if I had taken a if I had taken a level in like wizard or something, uh, I wouldn't have given me the attack bonus, which is why I chose ranger. What archetype are you? Me? I'm a bard. Okay. Bard archetype. You said you were an archetype. Oh, sorry. I guess I'm not. I don't. Ah. I'm not exactly sure what that is actually. It's a variation on a. Let me look. Class, but I guess you don't have it. They're at, they're at like the very bottom, right? With all the different. Yup. Yeah. Jeez. Hey, if you ever do a character rebuild, there's some interesting shit in there. Yeah, I bet. This is kind of entertaining. Um. <clears throat> yeah, I'm just a standard bard right now, but. Uh... So right now I'm level seven bard, level one ranger, and then next level I'll be. Try classing, I guess. Yep. 
which will be interesting. I mean, I already am. Yeah. And I have no end to the amount of spells I can throw out. I mean, Trek, yeah. diluting up to three isn't really a huge issue. I would say, technically speaking, it's not really diluting. They're all leading into the next. It does, if you, it can start diluting, though. Like, Pathfinder, oh, sure. that if you just, like, stack a bunch of different, like, if you're a level two wizard, a level one bard, a level one fighter, a level one, like, if you just stack mm -hmm. a bunch of low levels, class features are often what make things powerful, not just base stats. So mm -hmm. it does start diluting your power in the later levels if all you do is... Not if you use yeah. prestige Quick classes that uh, increase Karina, Karina. casting level. Is, 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 uh, Alex, is Alex gone for good from the game? Or is no, there I just, game I just told him to PM, shit PM me. Yep, I told him to PM me once he gets his shit fixed. Okay, sure. I don't think he actually knows what's going on. I literally told him that. Yeah, he just asked me if his character was dead. Uh, I'm just gonna tell <laughs> you what you just did. Um. <laughs> I mean, when... Okay, so let me say this to the group, because it was pissing me off. If I, I tell, tell. if I tell you that you level up to level 7 from level 6 a month and a half ago, and then when I tell you last week that you leveled up from level 7 to 8, and then two hours before the session you ask how to level up from level 6, it's going to piss me off. Because that shows me as a DM that you have done zero outside preparation for your character or for the game at all in five weeks which is unacceptable in my opinion that might be a little harsh but to me that just shows you have no interest in the campaign and i don't want you in it <clears throat> so i hope that isn't too harsh but that's how i reacted <laughs> two two can cast spells from the wizard spell list, the archivist spell list, which is cleric slash oracle, and psychic spell list. But I can only pick one spell per day for the uh, wizard spell list. 